forgot all about it. Right, there we go. I uh -oh. played in a tournament for Street Fighter V, um, the West Coast Division version. Oh, shit. Hey. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't win, but I won three out of five games. One of those lose two, you're out. So I did better <laughs> than I thought I'd do. I hadn't practiced in a while, but I was like, whatever, I'm going to. Who's your man? Uh, I main Laura. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten into the fighting games, not even like uh, the Nintendo Smash? one, whatever it's called. Yeah, never Smash, never Street Fighter. The only thing we used to play is like uh, in school, we used to play like Mortal Kombat 3 or stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. on the PlayStation or whatever. Yeah. That was pretty fun, but never really got into the newer ones. The newer, like, the newer ones are a little bit easier for all fighting games. They're still harder than like. To get into the average game, like a shooter, it's I pick up the gun and I shoot. A lot of these games are like, figure out the combo and don't get hit and watch out for pokes. And he can shoot fireballs. So it, it's fun for me. I've always liked figuring out combos and random things. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, or, or instead of knowing combos, you could just play Meta Knight and Brawl and not have to know a combo and win. Eric is broken. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, you could just do that. You could just spam the same thing over and yeah. over again. You'll most likely win unless somebody's really good. I don't know. Every time I, I have a look at, like, the Street Fighter games or, like, the new Dragon Ball game that's, like, the fighter game or whatever that's popular now, like, I, I just see people, like, jumping, flying, like, continuing a combo for, like, 45 seconds, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not learning that. Yeah. You and then you have, like, like, 50 different characters as well. Yeah. You don't have to learn the longest best combo like the, the best way to play is to figure out first of all pick a character you like and then play a style that makes sense to you with that character like this character is owner well i should focus on figuring out how to shoot guy, people from across the screen and get them away from me or this character's a rush down i'm gonna run up to them and beat them down as fast as i can and hopefully they don't stop me it just yeah i'm trying to figure out every single combo for every single person is too much work and i've never done it so it's not what you need to be the best. I don't know. With where you were going there, I was completely bought in that uh, when you were making that that rhyme that you were going to say, I'll run them down, I'll catch them like I can or whatever, and say, but they won't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Like, that's where it felt you were going. <laughs> no, I'm the gingerbread man. Yeah. One of the greatest sayings out there. Just can't oh, beat the Shrek. gingerbread man. Can't beat yeah. him. I mean, I mean, Shrek popularized it, I guess, for the new age people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Everything's fixed now, by the way. Cool. So, Sweet. Uh, Rocky, I yes. thought it was weird that you were doing 2d6 damage. So I looked mm -hmm. up that in the uh, Master Weapons list in the Combat and Tactics. And mm -hmm. so there are two types of damage that you have. You have damage to small and medium creatures, and you have damage right. to large creatures. Uh, right. 2d6 is your damage to large creatures, which is like creatures who are like, uh, I think I it's that. around 9 feet tall or something like that. But to yeah. But to small and medium creatures, your damage is D6 plus 1. I... I'm sorry. Let me see. I saw on the... Um, did, you, did you look at the long spear or did you look at the short spear? I looked at the long spear. Let me find that again. Yeah. Not, I guess yeah, 1D6 I... would make a little bit more sense if you're able to like attack three enemies that close into you in, yeah, in the single makes... round of combat. Yeah, and that's, that's my, totally that's my second... A uh, little thing. So we have a two-handed spear. Here, I can uh, snip this. Uh, and then post it in chat. And what's the D8? I think that's um, weapon speed. Uh, the D8. I don't even know. Damage versus size. 
K-N-D-W-N. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so we're just not going to pay attention to it. Fair enough. Okay. I'll um, probably look up what that is after. But I'm, yeah, I'm looking at um, Two-Headed Spear right here. Is Are, this, oh, this one is, wait. Is that the Koibu's one? This is the one in uh, Purple Worm. In Purple Worm. Yeah. And it says 2D6. I, but it might, we can, we can switch it to the 1D6 one, I think. That's uh, where do you see the 2D6 one? Um, oh, it is says... it uh, like the long C comma H? This one is, let me see. One-handed, yeah, one-handed spear, two-handed spear, long. Um, my bad. Yeah, there we go. This one, I was looking at the one below it. It's one-handed spear, stone. And I guess, wait, why would stone be more? I think something like D two D six is like a la lance, a lance, whatever you pronounce it. Yeah, like I a... think I think it's more of a. Let me. Show it's hard. To, it's hard to decipher this because it's not. Yeah, it, perfect. it don't do great letting you know what's going on. So, front screen. But D6 plus 1 is essentially like a longsword. It doesn't make much sense to have the same damage as a longsword while having a two-handed weapon. Yeah, so ignore the second part. But on this part, you can see there's like three versions of spear mm -hmm. in, in the chat. And then the one I was looking at was... So it says spear, one-handed, two-handed, long spear, one-handed, 1d8, put 1d8 plus one, two-handed, 2d6, or 3d6. And then, oh, I get it. I get it. So it's oh. spear, one-handed, two-handed, long spear, one-handed, two-handed, spear, stone, one-handed, two-handed. Yeah, because if you, uh, oh, yeah, here it is. So you yeah. see at the top there's, like, spear, and then yeah. everything underneath it is... Essentially different types of spears. Different types then... of that same spear. And this, what I have is a long spear. And yeah. it's a spear, comma, long. So if I'm doing it one-handed, it's 1d8 or 1d8 plus one. If I'm doing it two-handed, it's 2d6 or 3d6. Uh, wait, can you say that again? Uh, it says spear, one-handed, two-handed. Mm -hmm. And then those are the damage types for the one-handed or two-handed spear. Yeah. For the long spear, it is one-handed, two-handed with the, um, what's, it, what's that thing called? Um, at, oh. the asterisk, the so pound when, sign. when he one-hands hand, one it, it's 1d8 plus one for the long spear. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. he two-hands it, it's 2d8. Against large enemies, it's 3d8. Uh, sorry, 2d6. Against yeah, large, 2D6. 3d6 or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see that now. All right, mm -hmm. yeah, and you've been rolling with uh, your initiative with like D eight uh, or not with D eight with uh, with plus, plus eight. eight. Plus eight, yeah, plus eight minus three for um, two handed fighting style. All right, yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I think this long, I think that's literally just a long spear. So yeah, yeah, yep, that's it's all good. Okay, and then the next one. I, did we uh, we cover that right? Everything's. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and then next one is I reworked the pole arm rules. Well, I I wrote them down essentially. Yes. So I also posted them in my homebrew. It's at the very bottom. So okay. Essentially, the rules are. Whenever someone closes with you, closes with you, and makes an attack you get an attack of opportunity against them. It counts against your attacks of opportunity. Unless mm -hmm. they attack you, you can't make an opportunity attack against them because it's assume, it's assumed that they entered your range carefully. And if an gotcha. enemy has already closed with you and is still alive, you cannot use that opportunity attack against another enemy who closes with you because you're engaged with your current adversary. That makes sense. All right. That works for me. Yeah. All right. Cool. And so. I also saw something that said if you guys roll at the same initiative, but you have the longer weapon or a heavy, um, a longer weapon or a one weapon size higher, you would strike first. I don't know if you want to play with that, though, or not. I don't really care too much. So I, um, I think that uh, we should keep it as simple yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 
So we're not like constantly looking at books, even though this is a game yeah. about looking at books. But yeah, yeah, no, it's totally fine. I just wanted to see if that's what you wanted to do. But yeah, that's totally cool with me. Yeah. Okay. And so all I right. think that's all the uh, the housekeeping stuff we need to do. Um, another thing I, I I want to say for the party members and I guess anyone watching on Twitch. Um, in regards to my character, we, we played it a bit loosey-goosey last time, yes. uh, so the backstory has changed a little bit, I guess, or at least my assumptions about the character. It's not that I am asking Klaus to, to come with me to the, how do I say, to, to meet my lord, it's that I am going to be helping him in the party to, to form the guild. Yes. So that's, I guess, the only thing that should be mentioned. Yeah. So a little All bit right. of a change. I apologize for not giving that to you sooner. Um, but yeah. Okay. All good. It's alright. I'll just hold on to it and uh, later on I'll use it against you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. So let's get with a little bit of my little recap. So uh, let's get some music first. It's a little loud. There we go. So, today is May 5th of the year 421. Last session, Theo and Klaus woke up at their campsite to find Balthier and Anders missing. Nevertheless, they decided to push on and continue to the Goblin Cave. Along the way, they picked up Eridane and Rocky. Eridane seemed interested in Klaus, while Rocky wanted revenge on some goblins. With some new people on your side, you decided to take your chances at the Goblin Cave, killing six outside, but when it came to battle inside the cave, the goblins took the upper hand. Theo, being the last still conscious, bartered for the lives of his party members with the Hobgoblin, and brought the party to safety so they could recover and attempt the cave again. Once returned, the party quickly dispatched with the goblins and hobgoblin, letting the gob hobgoblin and a goblin and the goblin children live. Among some gold, the party found the reason they were sent there. A crystal orb with silver swirling smoke inside. Aradane discerned that this orb had a specific purpose, but that is all he could glean from it. After some discussion about whether to keep the orb for themselves or return it to its owner, the party decided to return back to Deadfalls for some well-deserved rest. You all catch some sleep in the Singing Toad, an inn located within the shanty town of Deadfalls. In the morning, the atmosphere at the Singing Toad is quite drab, as most of the patrons are having their breakfast before they go to work. After everyone's awake and some eggs and toast has been brought to you, you find yourself sitting at a table off to the side of the common folk. What do you do? I still don't believe we should give the orb away. I mean, uh, I guess it depends uh, what more he could give us, right? It's... Uh... I mean, it's not about what he can give us, right? I I believe that we are good people, and we really don't know what this item is. And you said that the person was quite shady, so I honestly don't know what to expect, but or what the purpose of this item is. But well, hey, why don't you uh, why don't you sit down with the meet him first, and if you uh, if you feel like he uh, seems too shady, or you think he might not. Uh... I don't know, be the possessor of the item, then we can always say we didn't find it. Can you at least ask him about the purpose of the item? Of course. I mean, we'll all be there together, so I can ask as much as you would like. If any of you would want to talk to him as well, you can. Fair enough. I'm just ready to go. If whatever happens, happens. It's up to you guys. I'm just here for the... Uh... For the mission. And for the killing of goblins. <laughs> uh, are goblins the only thing on your mind? Goblins. Orcs. 
Giants adventure. Yeah, whatever I can find. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of going to lean in a little bit. I'm like, whispered quietly, elves too. <laughs> Are you saying that to me or are you saying it to... Yeah, uh... to like to the whole party, like quietly whispering. Yeah. <laughs> elves too. I don't know, I'm looking at you like with eyes squinted. Mm, I don't care about the war. That's nothing to do with me. Hey, I'm going to nod my head like slowly. Okay. There's nothing wrong with killing an elf or two if they happen to be trying to kill you. Yeah. It's exactly. all contextual. Exactly. Uh huh. But don't I'm worry. I'm not going to lie. I've heard about elves and their bows and things. I fight up close. That doesn't seem like a smart idea for me. Well. If you're as strong as you say you are, you could get up close, grab their bow, and just break it over your leg. I got little legs, man. They could shoot me like 25 times before I get to them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that sounds like a you problem, if exactly. I'm going to be honest. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, get better. I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. So where do we meet this guy? Where, how do we get there? Where's he at? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kloss, did you have the information? I remember I, I gave it to you. Do you still got it? I do. Uh, Klaus informs you that uh, where you met this man named Giles, he was at the Snapdragon Stay uh, over on the left side of the shanty town. Uh, Wait, yes. Tio. Uh, I'm, 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 sorry, I just had like this clarity. My mind has been suddenly, all of a sudden cleared for a second. I'll call to do that. Yeah. N not you, you dumbass. Uh, anyways, uh, you said you were followed or at least accompanied by two other men that just disappeared? Should you Should we look for them first to see what happened or... <laughs> if they want to just abandon us out there in the middle of nowhere, if they see me, <laughs> they better know they're going to be getting something. Yeah, but I mean, they, they left all the food. They left all the mules and whatnot, right? I, I guess, but that's their problem, then. <laughs> if they can't find the stuff back, then they shouldn't have left. They took their donkey and goat with them. Wow. Well, if you don't want to look for them, I'm not going to urge you, but it's just weird that you have this interesting mission from a shady fellow, and then these men just disappear in the middle of the night. There's just something to be concerned about, but if you don't well, want to get mm, to the bottom of it, I'm, I'm not going to push you for it. I mean, I guess we can. I just don't even know where I'd start. They could go pretty much anywhere. I mean, where did you meet them? Uh, we met them at the inn. So we have to go there anyways, right? Yeah, hmm. Ah, see, so I see what you're thinking. You think maybe they were uh, an accomplice or something of him. Hmm, very smart. I, I don't know what to expect. Everything sounds weird about the whole quest and the orb and, and this man. Well, uh, hmm. Do you think we should hide it somewhere then so it's not on us? I mean... I wouldn't mind doing that, but I don't think it's in Klaus's nature to, to hide these kind of things if we've we've done the quest, but... Ah, don't worry about it. He's, um... Everybody has flaws. It's okay. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll trust your judgment. Just let's get this over with. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh... Mm. Yeah, I guess just keep it hidden on your class and, uh... We'll see what he has to say. Why not? What is he going to do? Is he going to kill us in front of a bunch of people? That seems a little brazen. He'd probably wait until nightfall when we're alone. Yeah, I can keep I can hold on to it for now. Yeah. Well, I guess that makes it. Do we want to go see him during the day or do we want to see him at night? I don't know. It doesn't matter to me, but mm, better, maybe daytime more better. people. Yeah, you're right.
Ah, yeah. Mm. I don't know, I just want uh, one more uh, one more drink of water, and then I'll be good. Okay. Quick, quick, quick question. Can we have weapons in the town, like, walking about, or is that, like, not really yeah. something we can do? You can okay. have weapons on you, as long as they're, uh, as long as you're not, like, brandishing them or, like, just poking people with them. You know, if you're, if you're polite okay. about it, then you're allowed to have weapons. Right, right. All right, cool. Yeah. So, also, it is uh, five silver for a room at the inn, along with... And that covers your basic meals as well. Doki. Okay. Take that off the sheet. Yep. Yep. Can you see the silver I just got? <laughs> Same. Mm-hmm. And anything else you guys want to do here? Uh, I'd rather get the stuff that we need, and then we can, uh, you know, figure out something. Uh, Maybe it, that earns a little bit more money, because uh, we're going to need that if we're going to... Mm, look, class, should we... Uh, uh, they kind of know, I guess, already. We're trying to collect up enough money so that we can uh, build our own hall of sorts, our own guild, try to make something around this piss area. Uh, so the, the better jobs you can get that are the least dangerous are preferable. And how much how much money are we talking about? Who I start uh, thinking through my head. Do you want me to make a specific check? Yeah, do you have a... Uh, hmm, appraising is more a... for, like, uh, like, art objects and stuff? Give me... You have administration, right? Yes. Give me a check with that. Okay. Alright, I'll roll Plus 15. Ooh. You know, guilds, it, it really depends on the location, on, you know, what the guild does, how big you want it to be. It's, it's all up in the air at the moment. You can't quite remember how much uh, the guild you used to work at, how much that costs. Uh, it's hard to say. This wizard, how he's feeling about it. How much, if he can pay us with a better job than this one. 25 yeah, gold yeah. Isn't for a day, I'm not going to lie. Yes, uh, obviously it's going to cost us a bit of money, but uh, I've got a little stored up, and uh, as long as we keep making some good jobs, hopefully it's not too expensive. Sounds good to me. Very well. Let's just go meet the old man, I guess. Yes, sir. I give you a salute, slap my legs, stand up, and start marching out the door. Alright. Uh, uh, I guess I ask for the, for the tab. <laughs> Pay the tab, <laughs> and then we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... There we go. And walking through the town, it's a pretty nice day out, actually, you know, just people going about their business, talking and working. It's just generally, this town just generally has a nice atmosphere about it. It's peaceful here. Not much going on. But... You guys continue on to the Snapdragon stay, and you can enter inside. Inside, you find uh, general rabble rousers and uh, drunks who are still uh, sleeping at this time of day. But off in the corner, you do see a man dressed in red robes with a red fox fur cape 
and a satchel at his side who is smoking a pipe and drinking a glass of wine. I point over and kind of lean over. Or, I. No, I'm short. I can't lean over to you. I'm uh, leaning up to you. Yeah, uh, that's the guy over there. What do you want to do? Alright, Danny's just gonna nod and. You, you can see that his face is kind of, you know, in a serious mode and he doesn't really talk right now. Yeah, uh, is there a bar here, like, close to where the guy is? Uh, he's more off in the corner, but the bar is, like, on the same wall he's sitting at. And how I want to get as close as I can on um, sitting at the bar and order a beer, but still, like, be able to listen in on what they're talking about. All right, yeah. you approach the barkeep who kind of like looks at you. He's a bit of a rotund man with a uh, scraggly beard. Ah, mm -hmm. what can I get you? Ale. Coming right up, and he'll pour, he'll get a uh, clean tankard out from under the bar and fill it with a golden liquid from a keg and slides it on over to you. Awesome. That'll be a copper piece. Done. And then I'll ask him while I'm sitting there, uh, you know anything about this red fox man? Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's Giles. He, he likes to, uh, come in here, you know, smoke his pipe, drink his wine. Okay. Good dude? Uh, good for business, I'd say. Hmm. Interesting. And I'll just keep sipping for a little bit. And listen in on what, um, what the party I'm doing. Klaus, Theo, you're, you're the ones that know him. I'm, I'm not going to do any talking for you. Ah. Uh, well. You are helping us out, so if you want to jump in, feel free, but... I'll, uh, I'll warm him up for you, and then you can, uh, do whatever it is people do after you warm somebody up. But is that something my elvish brain doesn't understand, or what are you implying? <laughs> uh, you know, like, I'll, uh, I'll talk him up a little bit, and then you, uh, can kind of come in as, like, backup, and, uh, you know, maybe work your magic, work your, uh, your vocabulary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, feel him out, you know? Right. Like, I, I kind of bring his guard down, and then you'll be able to ask some questions, see if you can ascertain whether he is uh, legitimate or not. <laughs> sure. Sorry. Sometimes, uh... I try not to use big words because most people don't know big words, but it seems like you do, so I'm, I'll, I'll try to use my bigger words now. Why say many word when little word do the same? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, but e either way, uh, yeah, I'll go up there. Mm. And you see me start puffing out my chest and strolling on up. All right, yeah. Yep. As you're, are you trying to be stealthy about this, or...? No, just going on up. All right. He will noticed you approaching and gesture towards the empty seat in front of him. Please, sit. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Ah, uh, come on, guys. Start motion to him. I'm, I'm gonna kind of stand behind you and I'm gonna be like, I'm, I'm, I'm just the muscle. Hmm. I see you Wait, have... See, so I have some new companions with you. Uh, what uh, what happened to the to the other two? That's actually a funny story. They uh, were actually sleeping, and then some sort of monster came, merged them into one person, and they turned into this guy. All right, he will. Do you want to make an opposed charisma check? 
I, I'm clearly making it as a joke. Okay. You can see if he All picks right. up on oh. it. He... He'll roll a Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, funny story, funny story. Uh, all right, well, if you don't wish to disclose, uh, we can move on. Oh, no, it's fine. They just, uh, I don't know, they just up and left us in the middle of the night somewhere. I guess uh, they were scared of the enemy. It was too big for their britches. So uh, us two came along, and uh, as we were going to fight those goblins, this heroic man came in and helped us out as well. Yeah, perfect. Well... From the looks of things, it seems that it's worked out. I was worried that they might have, you know, but I'm glad to hear that they are potentially still alive. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would assume so. I didn't see any dead bodies, so I assume you're alive unless I find it. Well, all is well and good. So... He kind of leans in to the table, pressing his fingers together, elbows on the table. Did you find what I was looking for? Uh, I, uh, possibly, I th we might have. It's, uh, how do I word it? We found a lot of different things in there. We found some sort of balls that seem to be like it was something, but uh, they seem to be crap. Um, there were multiple. But it's possible there's one thing that we found that might have been useful, maybe. Well, pray tell. This is a safe place. I'm sure you can reveal the contents to me. Of course. Uh, uh, muscle companion. Ah, uh, you were the one that happened to find it, didn't you? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna nod. Yep. Yeah, he he found it. It's, uh, how do we word it? Uh, the goblins were also, uh, it seemed like they were trying to use it in some weird way. There was one that we had that had this on them, and I show him the, uh, wooden. Let me make sure I got the name right. It is the wooden holy symbol from the goblin. I pull it out. Yes. Uh, one of the goblins had this on us, and it was like using magic. Yes. Uh, that would have been the half-orc I told you about. He was a bit of a wild card. I didn't know how powerful he was, because I've... Through all my divinations of that place, I never saw him cast a single spell. I, I did, however, see when you dispatched of him. Very clever on your part. And he looks to Aridane. By the way, I don't think we've been formally introduced. He will stand up and extend his hand toward Aridane. I am Giles. Wizard, entrepreneur, and all-around good guy. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend my hand as well, but instead of instead of introducing myself as Aaron Dane, I'm gonna see my, my name's Ryan. I'm a muscle, and a pra practitioner of magic, I guess. Oh, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Different name for an elf. You know, usually I've heard that they have flashy names or names in Elvish. Were you raised by humans? Well, I'm in the human city, am I not? Very true, very true. At this point, I want to um, make a perception check, I guess, or look around and see if anyone's eyeing, like, the group or looking uh, looking at the, trying to protect this fellow here. Sure, yeah, give me a perception check. Are you still at the bar? Still at the bar. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and give me that. 20. Sorry, while well, he rolls it, what was the name of the guy again? Giles? Giles. Ooh. Yeah, that is a very good perception check. And you do see someone out of the corner of your eye. They aren't very 
uh, conspicuous looking, but you do notice mm. that they're wearing a cloak, and they their face doesn't match the bulkiness of their body, which suggests to you that they are wearing armor underneath it. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on him every so often, but just keep looking around and drinking my beer. Um, just And listening on what they're going on, but I'm not looking at the group or the party or anything like that. I'm just doing my own thing over here. All right. Giles, tell me, my new uh, my new friend, that thing, What what is it for? Honestly, the... One second. All right, I'm back. Honestly, the purpose of that orb has been lost to me. I was planning on identifying it once it's been returned to me. Do I feel like he's bullshitting me? Roll me a charisma check. Uh, my charisma is And pretty he'll roll a charisma good. check. I haven't rolled his charisma. So. 28. Good. All right, well, he's probably not going to beat that, but... Natural 20. All right, that's his stats. Uh, that's shitty. He needs higher intelligence. That's still shitty. All you right. You can just... Re there we go. There we go. So I'll have 17 intelligence and 14 charisma. Okay. I need my calculator because I'm done. <sighs> All right. The opposed charisma check is completed. Uh, he's a little bit hard to read, honestly. He's... You can tell that... Hmm. There's no actual... Mm. Sorry, let me try and find the words for this. Maybe maybe I don't feel like he's lying, but there's something off-putting about the way he says it or something. Uh, I think there's nothing off-putting about the way he says it, but you get a sort of intuition that maybe something's awry. It could just be with you, or it could be with uh, something in his voice. Something in his general facial structure. For me, before I say anything, for me, it's, it's a very weird situation. You say you saw us dispatch of the cleric? Yes, I, due to the nature of divination, I can't exactly see everything all the time. So I had to try and pick the pieces and attempt to find a good spot for me to jump in. And I just so happened to catch one battle. Quite the show. I'm gonna let go of his hand. I was probably holding it too, too long, you know, just talking to him, <laughs> looking him in the eyes. Yeah. I'm like, well, Dio. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Klaus, do you, do you guys so we can see if it was the right thing we're talking about? Yeah, Klaus will procure from his backpack a something covered in cloth, and he will set it down on the table. Giles will giddily reveal the uh, reveal a small section of it to only himself he nods and closes it back up keeping his hand over the package you have brought me what I sought this is it ah, happy to hear that uh we could be trusted to get you something uh, like that. Yes. Now, 
let's discuss payment. Originally, I did say 25 gold. But, and he sort of reaches behind him, puts his hand in his robe pocket, and procures a gem, as well as a small pouch of gold. He sets the gold on the table and shows you this pretty... It's not exactly pristine, but it is generally nice looking. This is a garnet. Part of your pay. And he will slide it over towards you. To, I looked into it, and apparently it's worth around 70 gold. Mm. I take a little bit of a look at it. Yeah, would you like to make an appraising check? Yes. Do it to it. Yep, let me see here. Ooh, very nice. Uh, with that roll, you can tell it is worth almost exactly 75 gold pieces. Uh, yeah, I'd say what you said is pretty accurate. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but yes, I, I agree. So I'm looking at it. I guess, uh, Giles, there was one question I had for you, though, but uh, I don't wish to pry too much, so if you don't want to answer it, no problems. I, it was just something curious we found when we were uh, on the road. Mm -hmm. Hit me with it. Yeah, uh, one of the, I think it was one of the hobgoblins, it actually talked to us a bit. Yes. It's weird, I didn't think it would understand uh, language like that, but it, it talked a bit. Yes, uh, hobgoblins, like orcs, hobgoblins have their own language. And a lot of the times, they will learn the language of other monstrous creatures, but because those they rob speak common, they know some standard words in in uh, Shazari. Like something like words like steal and kill and give. They know words like that. Ah, yes, Some well, this one, uh, talked about how it, uh, it robbed you, uh, robbed from your house, uh, is that accurate? I believe so. I went into my second home to find it ransacked one day but the thing about goblins and hobgoblins is that they always leave something behind and Giles will pull out from you know another robe pocket a strand of hair it's a black curly disgusting looking hair this is how I found my orb again. Uh. Well, uh, I guess I, I wouldn't call an honorable person like you, uh, to fib about certain things. Uh, you are an honorable man of sorts. Uh, so I'm assuming, then, you don't know about potential, uh, conspirators that they had with them. What do you mean by conspirators? Well, uh, one of the hobgoblins also told us that, uh, or one of the goblins, whichever they were, told us that they actually got it from, they got a lot of these things from, uh, a group on the road, gave it to them. 
strange. Perhaps they robbed a person on the road and got the items confused. Mm. With something like this, happen. with something like this, you, I can't imagine they would have uh, misinterpreted this, which either means that uh, somebody else robbed you and they took it off, or uh, maybe there's some past history, but I don't know. If, if you don't, I'm not here to question your reasons or anything like that. I just thought I'd bring it up to you in case it, uh, in case there was another group that might have been stealing from you. At this point, there, Dane is gonna kind of put his hand, you know, on, on your shoulder from behind as he's standing and squish your shoulder just a tiny bit. It's like, how oh, now? Let's not accuse anyone of anything. That's why I said I wasn't accusing him. I was just letting him know there's other conspirators that might have robbed from him as well, so he might want to look for those. Yes, well. I don't know. Whenever something's stolen, it tends to get stolen again. He shrugs. Yes, but anyway, uh, thank you for the business. Is there, uh, obviously we showed that we could get what you needed and, uh, get back with it and even maybe give you some more information. Uh, is there anything else a man of your stature needs help from us other folks about? Well. Hmm. I can't think of anything right now, but I will keep you in mind, should I, or someone associated with me, requires your services, you get things done, and I admire that about you, and you bring it back, you bring it back, which is something I did not, I was, I wasn't entirely sure of that you would. Well, uh, as it says with our, with our man class here, I pat him on the back, he is, we are all honorable, but he's the most honorable among us, even if we had any inkling, which we haven't, but even if we had an inkling of feeling like we'd do that, he would set us straight. Yes. Well. Thank you for your service. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, and I hope, uh, nothing else, uh, gets taken from your places, and I hope you're able to hold on to everything well. Yes. Not many people like being robbed twice. Well, hey, if you get robbed again, we'll make sure to keep them alive so then you can, uh, deal with them. We'll bring them back to you. Very well. I eagerly wait with anticipation. Did I notice anybody else or anything else while I was uh, checking out, sitting at the bar? Or was that one guy just the one guy that looked like he was looking at the conversation? Uh, it was just that one guy. Okay, okay. So uh, while I hear them getting ready to kind of wrap up the conversation, I'll uh, pay for my beer and just walk outside and kind of just wait for them before like it's acknowledged that I'm with them probably I'm sure right. the guy knows but I don't care I just want to do it before so no one else notices I'm with them mm -hmm. you can do it you can uh, leave before uh, the party does and yeah Anybody have anything else they'd like to say to Giles or do in the Snapdragon stay? I'm, I'm gonna kind of look around. I just want to get like a very good feeling like I could remember this place pretty, pretty decently. Yeah. In the future. You can do that. You can ingrain this into your memory. And I guess I would uh, kind of bring the small pouch down to kind of like my side where I'm sitting and then open it up from my side to look down in and maybe run my fingers through there without really pulling a lot out. 
see if I can count up a decent amount or get a rough estimate. Yeah, it's about... Uh, I'll just give it to you now. It's 25 gold. Okay. Alright. I am satisfied and I put in my bag. Look, Justin. Don't worry if you want to take any. Uh, maybe we'll do it back at our place. I'll just set it in the bag, though. And I'll whisper to both of you. It's uh, 25. And then this uh, gem, I think, roughly, we could probably sell it for maybe 75 gold if we need to. That's good to go on. Shall we get going? Yes, uh, let's go. Alright. You too. I give another glare to, to Giles, like, straight in the eyes before I go. He, uh, gives you a coy smile. I'm stern and serious. And as as we're about to leave, like, before we completely leave, I'll, I'll whisper to Tio and Klaus. That, that man is a very powerful spellcaster. Ah. Glad to see you know that. That's why, uh, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to work with him. But he seems to be very, very untrustworthy. Well, what's the saying? Uh, keep your friends close, but the wizard's closer. Hmm. Okay. I I'm just implying you can't really have friends that are wizards, you know, because they could just kill you with their magic instantly. That's why you shouldn't mess with them to begin with. Ask questions about where their magic items come from. Yeah, you guys are now outside and walking around. Okay. So I'm going to go up to them, uh, walk alongside them after a little bit. Do I see anyone come out of there like, after us? Give me another perception check. Perception again, 12. Ugh. Um, you think somebody's following you for a little bit, but it turns out they're just a little drunk, you know? And they just looking for their keys and dropping them on the ground. Okay. So as they're walking out and I'm walking with them at this point, I'm going to uh, walk up next to them and say, uh, so there was somebody that was looking at looking at us in the bar. I'm guessing it was Giles. Probably his muscle. Looked kind of strong. I don't know what you guys want to do with him. But he looks a little dangerous in terms of crossing him. I'm not saying he can't or we should. I'm just saying to keep that in mind. Ah, uh, well, if he, uh... Well, if he tries to approach us and attack us, I know the three. You got it. Of course. Yeah, you can't let your uh, your walking coin purse uh, get hurt, right? Sure. Or I could just take the coin purse. Hey, hey, hey! Let's not get hasty here. All right, I've I have a very good purpose. See all the pockets I've got and all these. Uh, different bag pockets inside my bag. There's pockets inside of pockets. You can never find truly everything. That's fine. Where are we going now, guys? Um, along oh, your path, you're just kind of generally walking around town when you pass by a town crier who is making a declaration. <coughs> Rand sent the Ravisher to be executed at noon... Come to the planks to watch a lowlife fall to his doom. And he repeats this a few times. Uh, what time of day is it? It is, uh, well, what time would you guys wake up at? I'm guessing people in those times usually wake up like 5.36, right? Yeah, pretty early. Yeah. When, the, when the roosters and, and the animals awake, awaken. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like 7 or 8. 
maybe now because we went to talk to the guy and all that stuff. Yep. So it's around it's uh, eight o'clock. Okay. And what time is did the crier say what time is going to happen? Like at noon. Noon. Or at noon. Twelve p.m. Hmm. Do we know about this guy? Uh, does anybody have local history or anything like that? I do not. Uh, what do I have? No, not really. Does Klaus? Does Klaus. Let's take a look at his character sheet. He just has bureaucracy, literacy, and etiquette. So, no. Alright, then, never mind. Nope. Doesn't okay. look like it. Well, Rancent is a completely new name to all of you. I will uh, talk to somebody, um, probably close to the crowd, and ask them, who's this Rancent guy? Uh, buff, s a few people turn around. They seem to be uh, general peasants dressed shoddily they seem to be like in the market to just be buying some groceries and they say oh you haven't heard one girl says uh no nah, i'm from out of town oh well rancid he's a bit of a local legend you see he uh originally he was just you know a common bandit ran raiding people raiding the outskirts of the shanty towns uh we caught him, mm. but he escaped. And now mm. we caught him again, but this time he wasn't just doing banditry. He was doing organized crime in the city, right under our noses. Oh, interesting. Wow. Oh, sound like a bad guy. Well, they don't call him Rancid the Ravisher for nothing. Indeed. Well, thank you. And I'll walk back to the group. And then I'll just say, uh, uh, Theo, you know about this Ransom guy? He seems like he might be a friend of yours. Whoa, whoa, what, what type of assumptions are you making? Is it because my voice? Nah, nah, nah. He seems like he, uh, knows people that know people that do things for people. I wonder if you... Well, yeah. Them. Yeah. So I know I know people that do things for people. I do things for people. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you guys went in the same wheelhouse. Uh, except for he'll be dead and I won't. So it's kind of hard to compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you want to see uh see this hanging or beheading or whatever they do around here? Uh, personally, I think it's always good to see uh what's the word? See where you could potentially be going if you act stupid. Yeah. How about you, Aerodyne? I don't know. Uh, Aerodyne is like lost in his his own mind, thinking about the encounter with the wizard. Mm-hmm. Yep. Klaus, you. I could watch Rancid the Ravisher fall to his doom. Yeah. You're about that justice stuff. Watch a man meet his fate. Exactly. Well, speaking of that, I'm going to update the Pantheon page. Because I reworked no, that stuff. Very well. I was like, well, I'm kind of bored. Don't have much to do. We've got a few hours. You can probably meander around the streets if you guys want and head to the spot. Or if you guys want to do something else, I'm down. I think Aaron Dane, at this point, he's going to make up his mind and he's going to say to the party, I'll, I'll meet you guys later tonight. Is that alright? Let's meet up in the evening, in, in the usual place, where we sleep and drink. Uh, sure. And Aaron Dane is going to put on a hood and he's going to go to the inn or tavern or whatever you call it that they were just in and he's going to try and wait for Giles to leave the tavern and, and just trail him for like a couple of minutes to see where he goes okay if he leaves the tavern later today yeah all right uh let's do why don't we do the trailing first because that's going to be 
Uh, well, I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll do that first because we have some time. So, Aridane, you head back to the Snapdragon stay. And it's been a little while. It's been maybe about 20 minutes. And yeah. when you arrive back, you see that um, what do you see? I, I don't go inside in. I, I try to look through a window or something if possible, like while, okay. while passing by. All right. Look for Giles. Yeah, it's a nice day, so uh, people are oh shit. So people are still uh, so the windows are open. Yeah. So uh, you look in through the uh, the wooden shutters to see and you actually have a pretty good line of sight to where Giles was sitting, but you don't find him sitting in that spot in the corner. Hmm. I'm gonna stick around until until noon and then I'm gonna go to the execution and I'm just gonna wait and see if, if he comes back to the inn or he reappears in the inn from somewhere or anything else happens. I'm, I'm just gonna like uh, loiter around the street somewhere, do something. Alright. Yeah. You can generally loiter around. People pass you by. Um, how long? So you're gonna wait until noon? Yeah, noonish. I'm just gonna go to the execution, see what's okay. happening there. Okay. Uh, if he doesn't come back, that is. Yeah. You never saw Giles's. One second. You never saw Giles's um, bodyguard, I don't think, or what nope. what Rocky presumed to be his bodyguard. Nope. So. Nothing, but you did hear about him, because Rocky yep. told you. So, you see a man matching that generalized description of a man wearing a cloak uh, with armor underneath. And he heads back into the snapdragon stay you roll me a perception check okay my perception is also 12 like rockies one second all right yeah you catch him looking at you it's a very quick look but for a second your eyes do meet, but he makes no note of it and heads inside. Okay. Do I have a feeling like he recognizes me? Uh, that's the generalized look that he gave you. I think... Seems like he knows you, or knows of you, or something along those lines. Or has seen you before. That's the way I should put it. Okay. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go to the execution and just leave the tavern. If I feel like I'm, I've been noticed, and I feel like his friends know that I'm here, I shouldn't be here. I leave. Alright. You leave. Uh, Theo and Rocky... What are, what are you guys doing? I was think since there's nothing else for to do, us to do right now, I was thinking about heading to the execution and seeing, uh, seeing that, see what people say and listen in on what's going on around the town. Maybe figure out what this guy exactly was doing. Like, was he doing some crazy, evil, conspiratorial ring? Or was he just, you know, wetting his hand, I mean, uh, getting his hands a little, in the, a little bit of everything. I don't really judge too much on people doing a little bit of crime, but it's like a lot of murder, a lot of excessive thie uh, thieving, excessive, you know, 
trafficking yeah. and stuff like that, then I have a problem with it. So I have to see what this guy's about. All right. Give me a charisma check to oh, see no. how well you can talk to people and gather this information from them. Ooh, man. This is my worst. Your worst stats. Oh, no. People in a role-playing game. But it worked out. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, the information that... Let me just find my notes here. Uh, the information that you catch about Rancent the Ravisher is that apparently he was caught at a brothel by the name of the Crying Cock. And he was caught there with... Uh, completely alone. Uh, he was enjoying some debauchery when he was picked up by the guards and dragged to a jail cell. And uh, his crimes, well, he is not called Ransom the Ravisher for nothing. He, while he was a bandit, he did take part in the act of rape. But as soon as he started in city crime, he more so stuck to thieving and theft and you know, and uh, sometimes murder. No assaults, though. Okay. All right. With that information, I guess I'm, I guess I'll hang around and try to good a good. If the guys are down, get a good seat to see it from. Like, maybe come short somewhere high up I can stand on to look over. And uh, just wait for the execution to happen. Yeah, you can find a good spot. And, uh, Theo, are you doing anything? Um. I guess, uh, I'm just kind of... Mm. What would I be doing? I don't know, I'm probably thinking in my head about... Okay, here's how much money uh, we've collected so far. I'm, I'm going to have to give them cuts, obviously, because it's their money. And I'm not going to steal it, but mm, maybe I can convince them to put it more towards the the, how, the hall we're going to get. Them. I don't know. And I'm just thinking in my head about all the different ways like that we're going to be building this thing and getting the foundations ready. All right, cool. So, in no time at all the uh, people start gathering it is a pretty big event lots and lots of people are coming together to what oh let me describe what where you are exactly so uh, the execution place is located at the Planks of Doom down here, uh, just a little bit outside the city. Mm. And what these planks generally look like is, uh, you know, like a dock has like a plank. Well, these are just straight and they're built into the side of a, uh, what is the word? Like a cliff side. So, below these is just water and sharp rocks about 400 feet down. And uh, nothing really, there's no um, like indication, there's no signs, there's no uh, people about, just guards who are guarding the uh, like either side of each of these four planks and all the people gathered before these planks a little ways away. So, but eventually the the a, eventually a path is cleared. And coming out 
from the middle of this path stands a small gaggle of guards and just mainly, just mainly guards and people. You see all of these peasants reaching into sacks and pulling out rotten eggs, rotten vegetables, and just hucking them in the general direction of the guards. So guards get splattered with rotten eggs and rotten vegetables, but they continue on. Seems to be just part of the job and standing in the middle of these guards is a man. This man is doo -doo 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 -doo, has blonde hair that goes down to his shoulders. He has brown eyes and is generally a handsome man. He has a bit of stubble around his face and he wears a smile kind of eyes up the people to his left and right. But before long, he stands at the beginning of the Planks of Doom. Guards get behind him, start pushing him onto the plank, and he goes willingly, standing on the end and facing the audience. A man who seems well dressed. He looks to be either a noble or a bookkeeper of sorts. And he reads out the list of Ransom's crimes. He flips open a scroll and begins reading. This is Rancent, otherwise known as Rancent the Ravisher. He is to be sentenced to death by cliffside for as many crimes, including seven counts of murder, 19 counts of theft, three counts of breaking and entering, and one count of rape, as well as organized crime and general banditry. It is said that he leads the group known as Ransom's Rowdy Few. He is to die today, not tomorrow, not the next day. Thank you. And he will close the scroll. Uh, Everybody give me a perception check. At uh, minus five, because, oh shit. <laughs> well, there's that. Does anybody else need to roll? <laughs> uh, seven for me. So mine is going to be 27. Sorry. I didn't... Yes. All right. Yo, you so got it. that's still a natural 20, though. So, yep. Aridane, you find yourself in a good position to see that one of these guards, oh, I know, sorry, that one of these, I'm actually read this first, sorry. I need to look at this. Do it. Okay, there we go. One, one just, he just looks like a standard peasant. Uh, but it seems to be that he is mumbling the words to a spell. He's fairly close. He's near the front of the, uh, what should I say? He's near the front of the crowd. So he's only about, 
let's say, 15 feet away. Would I recognize the spell? I don't have spellcraft, uh, sorry, proficiency, but maybe I could do a, like an unproficient one? Uh, yeah, you can do an unproficient one. So what that, what an unproficient check is, you, uh, have whatever it is, which is, I think, intelligence, and then, uh, add or subtract whatever the, uh, modifier for that is. So let me just look at yep. the proficiencies in Koibu Sheet. So... It is half your intelligence minus two. And need to get a 21 or over. Yes, so. There we go. Nope, I have no idea. I kind of start making my way towards the spellcaster. All right. You... But uh, I'm guessing he's focusing on, on, on the execution, right? Uh, what do you mean? Like, when you're casting a spell, you usually have to focus on what you're casting, right? Yeah. Do I see him, like, looking towards the execution? Do I see him looking towards the guards and the man being executed? Or yeah, he's looking happening? in that general direction. You're more off to the side, and in order mm -hmm. to get to him, you'd either have to cross into the area where guards are basically holding people back, yeah. or push through the crowd. And do I see my party members anywhere? Uh, I'd assume that you're all together, aren't you? Well, I was I separated see. before, but I've, if I was able to, to meet up with them, that's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to point out the man to the party. I'm going to be like, pay, pay attention to that man. Something's about to go down. Okay. I'll stare at him, and I'll look around to see if there's anybody else doing something out of place in the crowd. Make me a perception check. Hmm. All right. Um, with that perception check, you see that surrounding, uh, once uh, this person it has been pointed out to you, you can spot them and notice that beside them are two people also dressed in peasant clothes, but they have weapons at their side. One has a dagger and the other one has a, uh, let me just double check. One of them has a dagger, the other one has a small rapier. Okay. Um, so everything points that out to me. I see these guys. I say, he's got two men with weapons on him next to him. And you see, you said we could probably walk, push through the crowd to get behind them. Uh, yeah. Potentially. Uh, you're a little uh, ways okay. away. It will take. Yeah about a round for you to get over there. Okay. I'll say I'm going to go up behind him. If you guys want to stay, just keep your eyes on him. I'm going to, and I'm going to push my way through the crowd. If they want to come with me, they can. But I'm just kind of like going to be, try to get as close as I can behind them to see if anything crazy happens. It, okay. Once I see that the party is beginning to move towards these people, I guess Aaron Dane, Aaron Dane is going to get some more confidence as well. He's going to look towards Klaus. And he's going to say, Inform the guards, question mark. Go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna yell out guards. And I'm gonna point <sighs> out, like, try pointing. Spells, spells, guards, guards. Obviously I do it, like, you know, more energ energetically and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Theo, are you doing anything? I'm, uh, I'm probably sure of the most of these people, so I'm, uh, Hiding in the thickness of the crowd away from this, waiting to see what happens, because I'm like, ah, I don't want to get in the middle of this. Perfect, all right. Uh, okay. So, uh, Rocky is moving into position. Airdane is informing the guards. Theo is attempting to hide in shadows. 
Um, well, I guess, are you we can, in the middle can... of the crowd? Yeah, you're in the middle of the crowd. You yeah. don't have to hide in shadows, but... Well, how hard would it be to get outside the crowd? Uh, it'd be pretty hard, because everybody's bun bundled up together. Mm, okay. Yeah, I guess I stay, uh, by the legs of Klaus. So if I have to, I can, uh, if people start freaking out, I can grab onto his leg. So I don't get trampled. All right. Sure. So that's what everybody is doing this round. Okay, let, me fr let me try and find some appropriate music. Um, Why would a man being executed smile? I knew something was off. Oh, some fucked up people do that a lot. Goldie Roger. Honestly, I don't live in the United States, so for us in Europe, that's that's like a non-existent thing, I guess, mm -hmm. or not very common. No, yeah, it doesn't happen that often out here. Well, we got more serial killers than you guys probably. So, plus yeah. execution is not allowed in Europe anyway. So I don't think any any nation has it anymore in Europe. Well, I might be wrong. We don't have we have it, but we don't use it. It's maybe like what maybe 10 at most a year and i doubt it's even that much yeah but you still use it eh not really you could use it more darn it kidding yeah but if you say 10 a year it's, it's still 10 a year you know i mean we get more you know more violence in the streets than that by far per state like gun violence or yeah knives even caribou apparently like two or three years ago somewhere in like Koreatown Australia there was just a guy who was riding a fucking bike with a machete in his hand and was just slitting fucking throats mm. yeah I mean shit like that happens everywhere but I'm talking about capital punishment right oh yeah, yeah right we barely I mean we we, you, we haven't used it in a while still do it right not really like I think there's like 10 to 12 states, maybe even 15 states that still have it probably on the books. And I think there's a couple, I think every year there's probably at least 10 to 20 people that get executed, I would think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very low number who, compared to who should be technically executed based on, you know, the law, but yeah, know, that's a little weird. That's America, baby. We're like, hey. If you're such a drain society and you should be put in jail for life, you know what? We're just gonna kill you instead. So typically, it's only reserved for like serial killers. Yeah, last year you had 11 in the whole year, but, but yeah, it's still, it's, still a number. Still a number. It's a number. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I care more about what they did and if they're actually innocent. True. Mm -hmm. True. All right. So. Uh. Rocky. Let me actually turn this down. This is getting annoying. <laughs> there we go. That was getting me hyped. Oh, yeah. You can be <laughs> hyped. You can be just more quietly hyped. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Rocky, mm -hmm. you are approaching and pushing and squeezing your way through the crowd, but there, people are getting mad at you. People are pushing you. It's generally slow moving to try and arrive at this uh to try and get behind this wizard or a priest uh yeah Eridane, you inform the guards that a spell is being cast and they look to you and they look to the crowd and they step uh they start mobilizing their forces and begin to enter the crowd and look around people who generally understand what's going on are giving the guards you know uh their space they're allowing them to enter and check through all of this and then theo people are just in general chaos they expected a show and it looks like they're gonna get it 
That's the end of this round. They're gonna get their money's worth. De well, it's free, so. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right. That's that round. So, Rancent will begin bouncing on the end of the plank. The wizard has stopped casting his spell. Ransom will look around at the crowd, give a coy smile, and he attempts to do a backflip. Give him a little, a little dex check here. Let me just pull up his, pull up his stuff. Hopefully he doesn't fucking break his spine or anything. Huh. That would hurt your sword a little bit, huh? It would, it would. But, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a showy guy, you know? I feel the three. Ooh, that's pretty good. He backflips and starts plummeting. And he's out of... Actually, wait, no, that's not what happens. He does a backflip, but instead of falling how you would expect, he is gently starting to go down. And soon... He is out of sight. Now I think it's time for initiative. Are we gonna do group or individually? Uh, we can, I think we can do individual. Actually, no, we don't want tokens, let's do group. Tokens would make that easier, but we don't have them. Okay. All right. Okie dokie. And then I'll also roll one for the guards. Alright, guards Thank are you. slow. So. I'm behind them, right? Now you are behind them. And as okay. soon as uh, this round starts, they go first. They begin attempting to move through the crowd. They push past you and everyone else and get get further into the crowd. So, I don't have my weapon out, so I don't know if I get an attack opportunity, but could I get, like, a trip with my foot to try to stop maybe the spellcaster? Um... Or no, I think you need, to be, you, you need to be holding a weapon to get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, and okay. I think that would be an attack of opportunity in this in this uh, in this instance. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. Okay. And so that's their turn. But I think that you can. Uh, yeah, I think you still have line of sight on them. You know, it's okay. not like they just fucking faded into nothing. You can still see them. Okay, so they just started moving, that's the, that was it? Yeah, they just started moving into the crowd. Um, and do I see the guards coming? Uh, the guards are uh, all all around. They're easy to identify. And there are two fairly close to you. I would like to point the guards to the people I see and get as close as I can, like, in the, as they're making this path away from me, I'm like kind of wave them over to where um, they are and get like as close as I can to them. Okay. Close as you can to the guards or to the uh, to the to the to the to the guys moving away. I'm like I'm gonna okay. like put my hand up and like wave like come here. All right. You can do that. You can uh, follow them through the crowd, and just still behind them. And so I believe that is Rocky's turn. Eridane and Theo. Eridane, I don't know if he could make it make his way all the way to the cliffs in this round. Would that be a possibility? Um, I'd say you'd have to push through the crowd, but once you push through the crowd, 
uh, which would be like next turn, you could make your way to the cliffs. No, in, in that case, nah, it's gonna, it's gonna be too late. Yeah, there I wanted are also to hopefully... guards all around that area. Yeah, I wanted to hopefully make make it to the cliffs and cast sleep on the feather, feather falling <laughs> uh, criminal to make him, <laughs> you know, drown while sleeping in the ocean. But I guess it's already too late for that. No, I'll I'll just try and push my way uh, toward the, through the crowd to help Rocky in case anything happens. Okay, yeah. But I think uh, we did all we could. I mean, it's pretty much over. Theo, what are you doing? Yeah, um, I guess I'd have to look up the class. It would be, for my height, it's hard to see over everybody else. Ah, what, what's going on? What's going on up there? Uh, guards are searching for, I guess, the spellcaster? Yeah, I'm not gonna do much good. You just, you lead away and I'll try to follow you. Alright, alright. And Klaus will try to uh, push through the crowd to get uh, essentially on the outskirts of the crowd. Is, is, is it because he's small? Can he like go through other people's square, like go through their feet or not really? No. Not unless they're like okay. ginormous creatures. But oh right, because he's still medium sized. He's not a gnome. Like gnomes could probably do. Nah, that. he's he's still a small creature, but okay, you know, gotcha. a, okay. a small creature like a f if like a four foot like child tried to like run through your legs, like it would be really awkward and noticeable. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I just follow Klaus, trying to get out wherever he's directing. Okay. All right. Next round? Uh, no, nope, the guards. Next is the guards. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so the guards will... Uh, Rocky attempted to give them... Uh, to point out the people who are helping Ransom, so they will get a perception check. Better make it nerds. Which was not really good. They're still kind of looking. A lot of them are just, like, turning people around and trying to discern if they're, like, magic-y or not. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them will... Uh, one of them does notice the... Uh, the people essentially... One of them does notice two people with weapons and he will attempt to push through the crowd to get to them and he can get to them this round because people are moving out of his way mm -hmm. the guard will essentially grab him by his shoulder attempt to turn him around failing oh wait no I need to roll opposed yeah, failing. And essentially, he is now revealed to everyone. Everybody backs away from him. But it's just one man who looks to have a dagger at his side. He is standing almost uh, surprised that he was caught. And he will unsheathe his dagger. The other guards who are near the so-called planks of doom are looking over the edge and looking to each other. They all have just pole arms. <laughs> and next is initiative. Anybody else want to do it this time? Uh, Tio, I believe in you. Oof, I wouldn't. All right. <laughs> you can't do worse than, than him. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. Yeah, 50 50. All right, that's for uh, the Ransom boys. This is for the guards. 
Oh, what's the ten for? Uh, uh, D10. The second one's for the guards. The first one is for the 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 bandits, the ranchers' boys. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the members of Ransom's Rowdy Few go first, and they will push. And uh, the two her the two who weren't caught uh, continue pushing their way through the crowd. The one who was caught will attempt to stab a guard with his dagger. Getting a not very good number, but still possibly a hit. Alright, let's see. That will not pierce through the guard's studded leather armor. So he will bide his time pulling out another dagger that was hidden in his boot and wielding them. Next is you guys. Oh boy, um, before any any blood is spilled, uh, Aradain is gonna do his favorite thing, and he's just gonna try and cast a spell himself. Hopefully, the the, the guards don't mind, <laughs> as he's the he was the one who who told them about the other spellcaster, and he's gonna start casting sleep. Okay, and yeah. I guess it goes off at the end of the round. So depends what the others do. So the let me look at the range of sleep if i recall it's pretty long it's 30 yards so like 100 feet essentially yeah so you can either get the spellcaster the one with a rapier or the one engaged with the guard if possible i do try and get it on a spellcaster if i don't really see him through the crowd or like i'm having troubles I'm just gonna do the guy with the uh, with the daggers. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can make me a. a... No, I'd say you can see the spellcaster. Yeah, I do it at the spellcaster. It's a bit of a risk because I can roll very bad, and if he's high level, I'm not gonna get it. But if I do, he's a high value target, I guess. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to roll the two d four now? You may. While he's rolling that, is, oh wow! Is, oh, nice. <laughs> is the spellcaster oh, and the other guy with the rapier split up, or are they still in the same direction? Sorry. Did the spellcaster and the guy with the rapier split up, or are they still going the same direction? They split up, but they're going the same direction. Well, they're going Got like you. kind of forked. Got gotcha, you, gotcha. So they're a oh, little yeah, ways away nice. from each other. Um. I think, I think that got him. That got the wizard, definitely. But yeah. I think that also... I don't know if you can... It gets specify. the lower level person first. Yeah. Mm. So if the wizard and was there's... like level one only, he's gonna go down first. But if the fighter was like level two and the wizard level like five or something, the fighter is gonna go down first. Well, it's, he's whatever. just surrounded by a bunch, yeah. of, bunch of people, low level people. But the sleep specifically calls out a thing that it's uh, enemies or like uh, people who you are opposing, because otherwise your teammates would be sleeped if you're fighting like a high level enemy. Okay, you can. Uh... He causes a comatose slumber to come upon one or more creatures other than undead and certain other creatures specifically excluded from the spell's effects. So uh, you can basically exclude. Uh, random peasants and just focus on this. Yep. But there's one caveat to this. He He's is an elf. Yes. He's an elf boy. Motherfucker. That's a 42. <laughs> he does not fall asleep. And would the other enemy be close enough? To be hit with the sleep spell or no? 
No, they are too far. Well, actually, let me look at this. Uh, duration, range. No, I'm going to say that they're too far away from each other. Okay, and so they probably can't really see each other too well, right? Not each other, no. Mm, cool. All right, I know I'm going to do. I am going to tackle the elf from the back and try to pin him to the ground. So I guess I need a grapple. Is that what it is? All right, yeah. Give me an opposed strength roll, which I'm assuming you win. Actually, wait, no, I think you have to make an attack roll first. Really, roll to attack first. Yeah. And I get a, how much from strength? Plus three? You get um, the same the same as your weapon roll. Yeah, the same as weapon uh, roll, except without weapon weapons. My weapon roll is a little bit stronger. Um, cause yeah, I'm without specialized. specialization, but. Yeah. So I, I think that's just a plus. One. Okay. I don't think you get any any from specialization the first year to hit. Oh well. No, you do. Uh huh. So <laughs> I grapple the wizard boy. Okay. You and hit him. Roll strength. Yeah, roll <laughs> strength check. This is a wizard, so I'm gonna give him like eight strength. Okay. And I'm plus eighteen. Point forty nine. I mean, I'm a wizard. and I have double that? So that's just eighteen. Yeah. Thirty four. Well. <laughs> no. No. You. It's a hefty dwarf. It is. Yeah. You can tackle this elf to the ground. The weight of you just next to crushing him. Mm -hmm. You can whip off his little cap to reveal that he has ears, pointed ears, and long and a ponytail, a black ponytail. Yes. But you're, since you got him from the back, you can't really see his face. That's fine. I'm just gonna yell to the people, get the guards, get the guards. All right. Uh, Theo, last round you and Klaus made it to the outside of the uh, of the crowd. There are still people around you, but it's not as congested. Yeah. Um. Ah. Let's go this way. I work. I tr try to lead Klaus to work our way towards like where the back of the group is to see if there's people that are. Try to basically catch people that are fleeing out of the crowd. And kind of eyeing them up to see if they seem like somebody to take out. I, I pointed out the guy with the rapier to them, right? Or did they not see it? I mean, I couldn't see it. I'm so short. Oh, that's right. You're short. You couldn't see mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but my goal would be to try to get both of us to the back of the group where we potentially think they'd leave out of and see if we can spot me to try to subdue. All right, you can make your way to the back and I would like for you to give me a perception check. Yikes, okay. I'm leaving you. Yeah. That's not bad. So you can spot that most of the people here who are like at the back are facing forward and trying to see what's going on but you do catch one guy who is just uh leaving he has a rapier at his side uh, I, I like do the really hard like backhand clap into the clap Classes chest. Ah, yeah, that, 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 that guy. Get that guy. All right. More like his balls, but okay. <laughs> yeah. And I go, ah, uh, sorry, I mean up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that guy. Right there. The one with the rapier. All right. Let's go get him. And 
I'm gonna say that took up like half your movement to get back here. Okay. Which would be your full movement. I'm, yep. I'm going by uh, Klaus's 12 speed. Okay. So That's Klaus fine. will move up 60 feet. And he's he hasn't closed with him yet. But he is pretty close. He's about uh, 25 feet away. And is that everybody's turn? I think so. I believe so. Alright, next up is the guards. They will... Let's do the one who's engaged first. The one who's engaged with the one with two daggers will attempt to just cleave into him with... Well, not cleave into him. He'll try to stab him with a spear. How many of them? <laughs> you said there was like an enclave of guards. There's a lot of guards, but they're like split up. Yeah, they're, like, they're around the outskirts and mainly at the planks, I think. There's only one guard that's actually fighting and the, there's like maybe a few guards that are in the crowd looking around for wizard people. Mm -hmm. And this guy completely whiffs his spear. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking, do I need to do it all? Really, really showing <laughs> just how incompetent my guards are, I guess, huh? <laughs> I guess they roll really bad or something. Okay, it's time on. to play an evil campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine, like, the scene from Hercules where there's, like, Arrows raiding, spears raiding from the sky, and the guy doesn't get hit at all. Mm -hmm. All right, is it rolling time? Uh, what do the or other guards more do? Guards the other, other guards will push past and get to you, Rocky. Cool. And they will essentially just subdue him, throw some manacles on this mage. Um. At the Planks of Doom, some of these guards just watching all of this transpire. Let me see how let me see how far he's gotten actually. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the guards now have are turning away and, he and hand on their head. Uh, some of them throw their spears to the ground. Some of them yell profanities. And that's the guards go. Uh... So I believe it's initiative. I'll do it this time. There you go. Oh, perfect. Nice. Why, why do I roll like a god? Max sleep. <laughs> no this. You should roll it every time. <laughs> exactly. My initiative, like a uh, nat 20. Sorry, my perception, nat 20, you know? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. All right. So this is for uh, Ranton's Rowdy Few. Oh, shit. This is for the guards. Okay, you all go first. All right. So I see that the um, guards got this guy. I'll mm -hmm. get up and I'll run back to the other guard who was fighting with that other guy. And I'll tackle him from the back if I can. All right. You're going to have to push your way through the crowd once again. That's uh, fine. I'm strong. You are very strong. So you can take the use and abuse. Some people are getting out of your way, but it's not enough to. Mm -hmm. It's not like a. It's not like they're getting out of the way for a guard. Got you. And then, so, do I get to him to tackle from the back or no? You can get up to him, but you can't make an action. Got you. So I will yell to him. Stop what you're doing. 
uh, the guards are here. Put your weapon down from the back. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Buy him dinner first. <laughs> you All guys right. turn. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go for the guy with the daggers as well, as Klaus and Theo seem to have the other guy under control, hopefully, soon. Um, I'm a bit faster than Rocky, you know, uh, 12, 12 movement rate compared to Rocky's, I think, 9, right? Yeah, um, you're a 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hopefully I can make it to him and I can take a full action if that's possible. If, po if that's possible, but uh, I don't know how close I am. So Rocky took. So I'm gonna say you're farther away from Rocky, from where Rocky was, because you're more. Uh... I'll just give you the result. So the result is uh, it's about seventy-five percent of your movement to get up to where Rocky is. Yeah, perfect. Can I still take an action? Uh, like back or whatever. Typically, you'd have to be a, uh, it'd have to be either like a half move in order to still make an action. So you could move 50% and shoot a bow or something, shoot an arrow. <laughs> in a crowd, yeah. That, that, that seems like a perfect circumstance. Now I'll just make it all the way to the guy. I'm going to pull out both of my swords and I'm just going to stand there. Are, are you sure you want to do that? All right. Uh, next up is the guards this we'll do the one with the daggers first the one with daggers is holding two daggers looking at all three of you he looks really nervous and the guard will try to get a flank attack off on him try to pierce him in the side oh my god why are my guards so shit that is not enough. They're gonna ask me to recruit pretty soon. I'm gonna become their captain. Yep. Yep. <laughs> King of the guards. Alright. So that was this guard. The other guards aren't really doing a whole lot. Some of them are pushing their way through the crowd to get to where this other guard is who he's engaged with. But they're not going to be here this round. And then last is the I think we missed Theo and Klaus oh yes we did I forgot about that yes let's do that first so Klaus is I think I said 25 feet away so we can get up to him and I think I'll try to tackle him so I'm actually wait I'll roll this in roll 20 shield rushing or attack yeah tackle yeah tackle him. Uh, that's not his character sheet. Where is it? Uh, Alright, so I think it's just a flat d20. Oof. He, Klaus, will attempt to bum rush this guy and jump into the air, but he, at the last second, he, the one with the rapier just weaves to the side and Klaus falls to the ground face first a <coughs> mouthful of dust <coughs> Theo are you doing anything yeah I see him go across would I be able to uh, has this guy noticed me uh, I'm gonna say no then you know what's coming yeah. Backstab. Good old backstab, baby. All right, I'm gonna say uh, that you're about. Uh, well, Klaus was 25 feet away with. With 120 feet of movement. And so you are 25, plus 60 feet away. So, so I'm a ways away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey. Uh, all right. So I guess. Yeah, I want to try to get up to this guy so I can give him the good old backstabby. Alright, I think uh, that's, what is that? That's 85. So you can get, like, 60 feet. Yep. Uh, My goal so is when uh, Kloss distracts him on the next turn, I'll go behind him and get him. 
All right. Perfect. That's your go. And so we backtracked a little bit. Next is, I think we're still on the guards. I think we did the guards actually. Yep. Yeah. So last is Ranson's Rowdy Feo. Uh, the one with the daggers will attempt to, I need to look at the rules for this. He wants to use a disengage. Does anybody remember the rules for that? You disengage and you're able to move half your movement rate, essentially, uh, without provoking attacks of opportunity. But I don't know if that works when he's like completely surrounded by people. Yeah. Yeah. So instead... And also, if he does that, they can follow. Yeah, that's that's uh, another thing that happens. He would just turn... I think I'll just turn and run. So... Uh... The three people who are engaged with him get attacks of opportunity against him. I have a weapon, so I can't. Oh, yeah, so you need a weapon to make an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the guard so, first. I want him to have the glory of this one. Come on. All right, the guard will attempt to essentially stab him in the back with a natural back, 20. Okay. There, we go. there we go. Perfect. I think spear is just literally d6 so he gets two of these if the other guy isn't uh could this be a double crit or not really actually yeah it would be a double it would be a double crit because he's unarmored so let's grab another set of dice i'll go with my gold dice let's grab another d6 3D flip, huh? that's like what i do against large people <laughs> yep Pretty crazy. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Okay, that's a six. That's a six. That's a one. So this guy gets backstabbed pretty hard. It's like in Dark Souls, where he literally just like stabs him once and then stabs him again, and that's the one that does the damage, and he just falls, crumples to the mm. ground. Can I see if I'm still able to stabilize him, or is he like completely gone? Did he like got him in the in the heart or something? Let's roll his HP. Actually, wait, no, never mind. He is a thief, so he has D6 HP, and he dealt th 13 damage. So no matter what, is it? Oh, it have to be level could three. Be alive. He could be. Alive. Yeah. Okay. Well, he has one HP, so no. Nice. No, he's dead. <laughs> Completely gone. Isn't it minus 10 or is it... Um... It's minus 10. Yeah. So he be... how much health did he have starting off? He had... Oh, four. He one had HP. one HP. Mm -hmm. Oh, And he no. took 13 damage. So he... Well, then there's that. <laughs> yeah, he is gone. Gonzo Bonanza. Unless you guys have a scroll of resurrection on you. No, I'm a... mm -hmm. I wouldn't wait for you. Resurre... Scrolls of resurrection, anybody? I'm saving it. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm gonna look towards the guard. I'm gonna give him like a nod of approval, and I'm gonna point towards the daggers, and I'm gonna be like, "Can I have those?" <laughs> he just shrugs. Uh, oh, wait, 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 evidence, evidence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. So yeah. And is it roll for initiative now? No. Next is the one Klaus and Theo are engaged. Oh with. yeah. So. Get them. Technically, you know, just class. Well, yeah. You're a little ways away. You're about, what is it, 25 feet away? Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what? Let's roll some morale. I believe high is good. Let me just take a look at the monster manual to determine. I believe low is good for morale. Yeah, right? so I think it's low is good and high is bad. You want to okay. get 10 or lower, generally, or something stupid? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Morale. Yep. -da 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 -da. Okay, no. He, like, takes a quick look behind him, sees this uh, fully kitted out 
man, this warrior who has just attempted to tackle him. Instead of turning and engaging, he will just use his full movement to run away. And I don't Did think anybody can get attacks of opportunity against him. Was Theo close enough or no? Theo is 25 feet away from him. Yes, I'm a little bit away. And Klaus... I guess there's one that got away. Klaus is unarmed at the current moment. Also prone, well, but... Oh yeah, that's true. He's gone, it's fine. Yep. He's not gone yet, my friends. Not gone yet. You know, he's still... Okay. I think he's still within line of sight. He hasn't ducked and weaved behind any buildings yet. He's just going in a straight line right now. But it looks like he'll have to turn soon. Yeah, let's go before him. I can snipe him. Yeah. Uh, it's initiative. Can you throw your dagger with, like, backstab or something? I it has, oh, to, I be wish. It has to be melee. It has to be melee, okay. Yeah. I think Theo should roll it because he's the one who's still doing stuff. Exactly. All right. Please. Ah! Oh. oh, no. It's still possible that they roll. Yeah, higher. yeah. This is for uh, the one guy. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Even better. All right. I don't think the guards are really doing anything right now. Uh, so we'll Were just... there no guards at the end of the like at the edge of the crowd, like behind the people, or no? Um, there. Hmm. There are, but they're kind of keeping them, else. keeping everyone contained. Got you. Okay. So, Theo and Klaus. Klaus will get to his feet and continue to give chase, but Theo, you can. Do something first. Yes, and I believe I get. Is it plus two because it's to his back? Yes. yes. I believe it's plus two. Flank plus one. Back attack plus two. <laughs> and then you're also. He's also 120 feet away plus 25. Yep, I will. Uh, do. do, do. Actually, that is perfect because my first range is 150. Ooh, nice. With your daggers? My sling, baby. Oh, sling! Oh, yes, oh, I'm yeah. slinging them. I believe halflings get plus one with slings and thrown weapons. Yep. So does that mean? So I get two. You said two for back attack, one for. Mm -hmm. uh, one for that. Yeah. Okay. So I get plus four. Nice. All right, please. Ooh, Ooh, very nice. A 20. Actually, is that a crit if they're not wearing armor? Dirty 20. Um, That does clear by 10. Let me look at my rules really quick. We said that they it uh, can clear by 10. And on, on a, a non-18, 19, or 20, and 5 on 18, 19, or 20. Uh, I just have 5, 10, 15. On an 18 or higher. Yeah, but, uh, well, I thought we said that. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, does anybody else remember? Because I forget too. We we haven't ruled on this one. Only Koibu does the, like, if you clear by 10, not even on 18. Right, 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 right. And I think I said I, that. I, We're not going to do that. I, okay. But I'm, I'm not sure if yeah if you're saying no. That's not yeah, I think, I, cool I, think I said no last session. All right, it works. Okay. Because okay. dragons can't one-shot us for free. That's fine. Yep. Okay. So just normal. Just normal. No, All right. Oof. You're using a bullet. Yep. So All a right. D4 plus one. There you go. That's a lot of damage. Three. Three. Okay. All right. He is a thief, so he has D6 HP. Roll it in chat. Roll it in chat. Roll it in chat. I just rolled it, and he got four. No, it's fine. You rolled it. More. Okay. <laughs> he is still up. You sling you over your head you start whirling this stone ball only to release it and it flies straight into his back you can't hear an audible crack 
but you imagine that there was one. But he's still going. I yell. Tackle him now. Class, oh, throw something at him. Anything. <laughs> Klaus. Klaus throws the half leg. Klaus looks at his character sheet. Uh. No, he's melee boy. Yeah, he only has melee. Klaus will just attempt to run him down. And is still 25 feet behind him at the end of this turn. And next, I believe, is the last one, which is this one guy who... Hmm, what's he gonna do? He's being chased. What's the play here? He also got severely injured. Yeah. So he's probably... He's probably just gonna keep running, I guess. There's no point. There's no point in turning and fighting just to die. So he's gonna keep running. And he's going to attempt to go into and out of, you know, people. He's going to be running around. Uh, stuff he's going to be uh, throwing down stalls. So that's going to cut his movement in half. But he's going to essentially just try to escape. And I'm going to leave this up to a dex check. At He's going to have 13 dex. Natural 19. Oof. And I'm going to give Klaus a perception check to see through this bullshit. He has... I think that's a 9. nine. No. With a he 2. He can do it. He can't do it. He rolls a 2. So, you guys lose this last person he's fine no oh, he's fine I scratched my head ah should have aimed a little higher didn't look at the street properly and not being straight ah why is it curved ah Standing at the body with Aerodane, like, ooh, that guy, that guy didn't do too well, did he? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the guard. Is, is the guard okay? Did he just, like, kill his first person in his life when he's, like, shaking or something? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I think high is going to be he's okay with it. Lows, he he's going to be kind of shell-shocked. I'll roll this in chat. Okay, he is fucked up. He's never killed anyone in his life, and he's just standing over the body with blood dripping down from his spear. He's shaking. The body's probably still, like, uh, in the spear, and he's just holding the spear up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> face to face with the guy. He's just staring at this guy. I'll help him out, and I'll pull the body off. Like, and lay it on the ground so he doesn't feel like it's not staring at him. The thing he's done. I'm gonna uh, I'll take the guard. That was a good shot, man. He uh, throws up. Uh, boy, yeah. I mean, you, you should call for a superior boy. I'm, I'm gonna Public. give him a pat Guards, on the back. We got another one over here, and a friend's uh, he's not doing too well. He might want to come over here. Uh, uh. And the guards will come over. He'll like, one of them will basically lead this one away, and they'll just stand over the body, look over him. You guys, uh, one will approach you guys. He says, "Well, you guys, if you hadn't been here, all of them would probably have gotten away. So we thank you for that. But." There is a bit of an issue. Uh, 
going on? So, Rancent, the only one who we wanted to die today, has just escaped. I'm sure... I'm sure you must have seen him just kind of floating. I don't know what the fuck that's about. But when he got about halfway down the cliff, some people threw him some ropes. And he disappeared into one of the cliffside caves. I was hoping that you guys could help us in retrieving him. Fine with me. I'll talk to my boys, see where they are. We're Klaus's boys, by the way. So, that's uh, a paladin. He's somewhere around here. He's usually telling people what to do and how to get there. I'm sure he's down to do stuff for the good of the country and blah da 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 da. But yeah, let's do it. I'll look uh, it Rocky, I, I know you like killing goblins and orcs and whatnot, but what we're talking about is man manslaughter, right? If, if eh. they fight it. Bad manslaughter. That guy killed and raped and pillaged and whatnot. I'm okay with this. Yeah, he's a he's a bad guy. We he needs to be put away. Bad guy die. That's my rule. And let's get let's get uh, Tio and Klaus here before we discuss any any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we commit. See you do, in a little bit, we... bit, Captain. My Captain. You know, keep walking to. Do we go to to like the sheriff's office or where where do we go to to talk about yeah, this? Yeah, uh, the guard will just essentially accompany you as you all regroup together. Yeah. So and I'll say to Theo and Klaus, I'll be like, hey, did you guys get him? Ah. Uh, almost. Ah. It's all right. I, I hit him really well, but the, the, the slanting and it, I got him in the spine, I think, though. I got him like right in the back. Maybe the kidney. Uh, you did the best you could. And they're sneaking about it, using magic and stuff, apparently, so... Not your fault. Uh, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know if it was the best I could, but it was pretty good. Got you. Yeah, what about uh, you two? Did you uh, get one of them? Well, I caught the... Some elf, half-elf, I don't know. Some kid with black hair who looks kind of like Aerodane. And then uh, a guard stabbed this other guy really good. He, he's gone. So good day, overall. Ah, uh, yeah, good day. Um, did, did you just do it for free? We're about to discuss that now. Apparently, the boss got away. And uh, they kind of want us to go check it out, see where he went. Maybe they give us incentive to do it, and I look at the guard as I say this. Yes, we will give you incentive. Uh, as you can, as these... you can Sorry, either you... ride along with us, in which case we'll just split whatever we find on Rancent, or if you guys want to do it, we'll give you uh, ten gold if you want to do it yourselves. Oh. Uh, the, these three can do it. These three can do it. Uh, so is that 10 gold per person or 10 gold for, for all of us? 10 gold in total for all of you. Mm. And what do we get for uh, dealing with these lot? Well, he kind of looks to Aerodane. The casting of spells within city walls is prohibited and usually the sentence is death but for you i think we'll let that slide I got a quick How's question that? would he have known that if he didn't see him oh, that's true yeah him? yeah and it didn't affect anybody well, he, so. when the guards did stop this guy he was asleep he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't elf, right? remember he was an unaffected because he was a um oh that's elf. right yeah shit never mind he doesn't say that my apologies instead um, of that i'll say how about we get that wizard boy's spell book to him. Uh, he uses it for stuff. He writes down notes or something like that. Uh, I like books. He like books. He's smart. Sure, we'll let you take a look at uh, the wizard. And he'll uh, lead you on over to uh, the wizard. 
who he's dressed in he's an elf uh Aradin, you can tell that he's basically a full-blooded elf no half elf in him and uh, he is dressed in just commoner robes he doesn't even have a weapon on him I'm I'm gonna say in Elvish, you're you're far from home. He says in Elvish back, so are you. Why why help a rapist? A murderer. Because he and I were not so different. Are you one of his men? Are you a rapist, a murderer? A a plunderer? I take what I can. And I give nothing back. That's very different. Do you, do you kill innocent men? Do you steal their property? What's your game here? You're not I'm a guard. Small. I'm not, but just I'm just making small talk before you're executed. <laughs> well, then I got nothing else to say. Eh, fair enough. I'm I'm just gonna shrug my shoulders. I mean, it, it, like in this area in particular, there isn't many elves, are there? Uh, there are not many. Usually, if there's an elf, they're uh, in the upper like echelon of society. They're either like noble. Well, s sometimes they're nobles. Sometimes they're merchants. A lot of the times, they're travelers who go to other lands in order to just adventure. Just one more question, if if I may. Mm -hmm. Any reason why follow a man as an elf? Because he takes care of his boys, and that's all that matters to me. So you would kill for a man with no questions asked, just because he... Gets you food? I don't do all the dirty work. I'm a... I'm mm -hmm. a wizard. Wow. Cool stuff. I'm looking around like, what are they talking about? And I say to Theo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pointy, speak in, speak in our language. And he just butts, like, press... Like, basically hits him with the butt end of his spear. Uh, I'm going to look towards the guard, and I'm going to say you should use the other end. He's as worthless as the other guy that escaped. I'm like, hold up, hold up. He might know a thing or two about where we're going next. Let's hold off on the craziness. But I will say, let's get his book, though. Book. <laughs> I was telling you books. They don't, they don't read where are you gonna find my book? Where you, you think I brought? You think I did. brought it with me? I think you're going to be tortured if you don't. Hey, hey we don't need to torture him. If he wants to be a smartass, if he wants I to be a smartass, then maybe that's where it's hidden. Oh, oh, indeed. I'll I've heard about things like this. <laughs> He starts looking scared. Don't worry, I'll let the big one uh, test it out just to check. All right, there, uh, LV. Hmm? I look expectantly up at uh, Rocky. <laughs> expectingly. Expectingly. <laughs> But does the elf do anything at this point? The elf is just kind of like sitting there. He's bound with every with all the guards standing over him. He knows he's lost this game. Now he's just kind of worried about what you're gonna do to him. So yeah, tell you what, give me the spell book. Let me know what's going on at your boss's place, and I'll see if I can have the guards not kill you. Uh, one of the guards pipes up. Yeah, we can... Instead of having him... 
executed, we'll just throw them in a cell. Yeah, and you got to live a long time. Eventually, it'll go right past 100 years or so. Totally fine. Well, what if I am my spellbook? That's going to make it a lot harder for what I want. Actually, I think that's a riddle. I think what he's saying is he put it inside his abdomen. <laughs> no, 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 no. You should check for uh, scars on his abdomen. Maybe he sewed it up in there. And I pull out a dagger. Ah, oh, I can probably get it out. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. And he, like, awkwardly lifts his shirt to reveal on his body are tattoos. So, oh. some of them, they're all colored, but let me just get a general idea about what they look like. Um, one is a picture of a blue feather. The other one is a flaming hand. The last one is a bunch of... One, another is a bunch of swirling colors. And the last one is a picture of a rabbit. The, this, this is my spell book. I'll be like, do you do that too? Is that how this works? <laughs> uh, I thought I knew about magic a little bit, but this is way beyond me. Eridane, what magical languages do you know? Um, I know quite a few. So the ones that I know is obviously Elvish and Ancient Elvish. So I don't know if Ancient Elvish would be a magical language. Then I have so ancient, the, the Ancient Elvish. I have Erdic, I have Lavaric, yes, those and are the... Ancient Elvish. So you have uh, Erdic and Lavaric. Those are the two magical languages. Yeah. So, uh, looking over these tattoos, you see that there is no recognition about what these symbols might mean, or how you would even begin to attempt to learn these spells. Just yeah. because, you know, uh, Lavaric is mainly a a scripture, and Eridic is more of a Eric is also mainly scripture based okay well I'm gonna look towards the party and I'm gonna say some uh, so I'm assuming it's uh, the magical language of like the the rogue wizards and stuff like that right yes Xenaric Xenaric yeah so I'm gonna say he's he's using a different magical language that I'm accustomed to oh I, I can't get you. Not like he body. knows what you're saying, but he does not know what you're saying exactly. So he's like, mm, mm, makes sense. Indeed, well, quite. to be fair, this makes it actually a lot easier for what we're supposed to do then. I suggest we skin him as well. Yes. Try his skin, keep it, you know, as a. Okay. Well, no. I mean, we don't even have to do that necessarily. Like, if it's his spells, all we have to do is cut out part of the ink that's on his body so it just doesn't make the whole thing usable. Exactly. Especially these spells, I recognize them. If I ever learned language, I would probably learn them as well. These are pretty good ah. spells. Well, I'd say take him to the cell. We're gonna get ready to go and find the guy at the place that you guys told us. Oh yeah, the I'm gonna speak in Elvish again and I'm gonna say, uh, where 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 can we find your your master? The one you serve. This isn't Lord of the Rings, but yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, he he will say to you in Elvish he has a couple spots don't know exactly which one he's going to be at now he hasn't told me about all of them but I think which one is the closest to the cave inside the cliff or which uh, one is the cave in, in the cliff where can we find the entrance so he has a couple in town, the shanty town, just abandoned buildings. Uh, I don't know about who 
I don't think I've... The one we were planning on having him stay at, I've never been to. But I know somebody who has. That person... I don't even know her name. But I mean, let's be real, right? He's not stupid. He's not going to stay in the one you agreed upon, especially knowing that two or three of the members have been caught. He's going to be staying somewhere else. Right? Could be. Mm. But then he wouldn't go to anyone that I know of. Hmm. Well, the guard told us where to go. Going to the mountainside. You know about that at all? Um, I'm gonna look towards Theo for advice. He's obviously like the, the most roguish of all, all of us, right? I'm gonna be like, well... Mm. Well, if I were him, uh, especially if he went down there, apparently he probably set up something in the lower town sewer area. Um, we just had to figure out out here and maybe the outskirts, probably uh, to the north uh, west. Mm, no, northeast, I would say. He's probably up in there somewhere, probably close to where... Uh, some sewer grates are, or some place that has a lot of escapabilities. Because you don't want to be trapped in a place again. Mm. Uh, ironic? That's, uh, check me if I'm wrong, but didn't they say he was going to a hideout in the hills or something? Uh, I don't think it was in the hills. I don't be... I don't think I ever mentioned hills. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So, like, all right, well, let's check it out. Do you need to? And most yeah. likely, he wouldn't have brought people with that would probably know many of the places he'd go. He'd probably be too smart for that. He'd bring along the people he knows that are expendable. So, obviously, he thinks this wizard here is expendable because he's not as good as his other magic users. Well, he says in uh, Shazari. Uh, I'm his only magic user. So. Eh, as far as you know, he's probably got one that's with him right now. Oh. <laughs> well, let's check it out. I'll ask, I'll ask the uh, elf for like, the locations so we can like go and storm them really quickly. Yeah, he'll... If he values his life. He will... Hmm. He'll give you the locations of a few that he knows. Some. Just by, I mean? like, word of mouth. Cool. Uh, what, what's your name, Elf? He looks up a random name generator. <laughs> um, Elfington. Mr. Pointy. <laughs> Mr. Pointy, if you have my word, if if we find the one you serve, and we apprehend him again, and it's because of the information you gave me, I'll, I'll do a favor for you. Anything within the... How do I say it? Within the squares of law, if that makes sense. But if you really give us good information, I'll, I promise to repay you as much as I can. All right. Well, I don't think that's going to do much good for me with these guys over my head, but... Alright. My name is oh, Galen, by the way. Galen. So, Galen. he will give you the location. I'm just going to mark them in black ink. He'll give you that one. He'll give you... This one. Could you do a different color? Because it's very, you know, gray on black. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, tweet that. Tweet that. And I will do. Let's do red. Yeah. So there's that one. There is. This one. And there's also this one that he knows about. 
Okay. And you said he jumped into the pool, the planks of doom over here. Um, so does the the river go like towards the right? Is it is it a river or is it? A it is lake? not a river. It is straight ocean. 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 Ah, okay. There was a there was a rope that he caught and went down into the sewer, some sort of cave down there. So that means he would have had to traverse something and use uh, a grate of some sort probably to get back up here. Okay. I suggest we go to the one that's closest to down here. So I'm guessing would be whatever this is in the north. Yeah, this one? Yeah, that one right there. All right, yeah. Uh, why don't we take our first break, and when we get back, we will attempt to locate Ransoms. Perfect. Open mean. Before that happens, do we get any experience for completing the quest? Maybe, maybe T levels up before uh, quest, tackling really? this. <laughs> yeah, we can do experience for um, the orb. You guys are in town. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but we'll do all of the, uh, like, combat experience and stuff like that at the end of session. Yeah. Cool, that's fine. So, for the quest to give Giles his orb, you all mm -hmm. get 750 experience each. Damn. 50, that's pretty good. So, calculator. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, God. Yeah, I leveled. All right. Times 1.825. Plus 257.5. Uh, so me and Klaus should be at 1,082.5. I do believe Klaus has some extra experience from before, right? Yes, so I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. I have it in his pinned messages... So I'm just going to pin another one, too. I'm getting there. I'm halfway there, baby. All hey, right. guys, I'm one-third of the way for our fighter level. Yeah. One day we'll get there. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Be back in a few minutes. All right. Same. We'll be going on break right now. So see you guys on the other side. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to session three of Rise and Fall. Uh, before the break, the players were discussing how they were going to catch Rancent. And the elf gave them a little bit of information about where some of his hideouts are. So I think we decided that they were going to this one. Yes. Alright. So. Hmm. I will say to the party, so. This is good and bad. We got two of them. And one escaped, and he may know who Theo is. He for sure know who Klaus is. Um, ah, he didn't see me. I got him in the back. Ah, he was a coward. He would have saw me if he didn't run away. You know, you're right, but he definitely saw Klaus, so I'm thinking, Theo, you could potentially walk around that area if there's people inside and it's like a bar or something like that. You can flip inside and see what people are talking about. If you see wet clothing or wet footsteps anywhere, it might be a good sign that there's some dude in there that probably escaped some plank of doom. And uh, <laughs> Easy. You know, Aerodan, you might be pretty good at this, too. You guys are pretty sneaky. So if you two want to go around, check it out. Me and Klaus can stick outside and monitor the area. If anybody's coming by who looks suspicious, looks like the thief, or looks like the uh, rancid, we can catch him then. I mean, isn't the whole purpose of this is that they're not expecting us, and they're expecting the guards? We should go quickly about this. Otherwise, if we're like staying there around, snooping around, they're gonna. I'm sure they're gonna like figure out that something's wrong. Well, I think the only one they would know is Klaus, right? Yeah. 
You never know. I, I started shouting spellcaster, spellcaster when they started casting spells. Yeah, but he got caught. Well, all right. If you want to storm it, I'm always good for good storming. I mean, it's I'll, I'll follow whatever Klaus and Theo says, because... Ah, it's fine. We get close there. Uh, you three just give me uh, 30 seconds, and I'll just scope out the place inside, and then I'll uh, give you the signal. And then I put my hand to my forehead and give you a, like, two-fingered salute. Gotcha. And we want to do this today, right? We don't want to wait for my spells tomorrow. Uh, ah, it's up to you. Up to you. I don't know how magic works. If you need it, we can wait. Preferably, but the I need longer a day, we but... wait, the more likely they get away. All right, let's go today. We got the spell cast here. I'm not worried about the others. He said he was the only one as well. Yeah. But we know how trustworthy thieves are, right? Very. Yes, exactly. we are very trustworthy. <laughs> I'm only, but I'm not a thief like those. I'm a thief of the heart. I still, I swoon many a woman. You're a rogue, you're not a thief. It's very different. Hey, don't assume the type of practices I've done. I have been known as the thief of every heart in the world by every... Uh, yeah, and I start walking off. That was awkward. Sorry you had to see this. I looked towards the guard. Oh, it's uh, it's no trouble. But, uh... Alright, well, you guys have fun with that. We will... Me and my, uh... Fellow guards will stay here. You know? Alright, and you all... <clears throat> can start... Shove off walking through the town. The directions that the elf gave you uh, were not exactly exact. He generally just told you what the building looked like and roughly where you could find it, but you can get there eventually after being turned around a little bit. Uh, you come upon this building, which is... A small, pretty dingy looking, uh, like regular house, but the windows are boarded up and the, you know, there's a uh, bits of cloth kind of sticking out from the windows as well. Yeah. It's a pretty small house. Theo. Walk around the building, make sure there's only one entrance or exit. Don't want them sneaking out the back if, if we start doing anything. Ah, of course, of course, I can uh, do that. Yeah. So Theo can come around the building doing a once-over. And I guess from your uh, perspective, do I need to do a move silently or hide shadows or anything like that? Sure, yeah, you can give me... A move silently. I will roll it for you. What's your chance? 60. Fuck, how do I... I only drop my dice when I'm here. When I'm DMing. Alright, I'm gonna pick up my dice. Where'd you go, you little bastard? Where the fuck did it go? Oh, did you get the uh, knives from the guy who died? No. Oh, no. They, they said evidence, and then they yeah. just took them. <laughs> said no. your chance was 60? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, walking around, or more like stealthily stepping around, uh, the building on the outskirts is a little bit run down. Nobody's cleaned it, so he keeps stepping on bits of broken glass and twigs. But you do a once-over of the building, and nothing 
There are no other alternative exits. Every window. There's only really a window at the uh, front facing the street. Everything else is just straight wood. It's a little bit rotted. I come back to the group. Ah. I mean, maybe it's in there, but it seems like a, a bad idea to hide out in there. There seems to be nothing else unless they have a really well hidden, uh, hidden trap door somewhere inside. But, uh, yeah, it, it seems like a dead end if you stick yourself in there. Hmm. I guess, but it's so in, in, inconspicuous, right? Nobody would guess, expect anybody to be there. I guess we might as well check it, but, yeah, just so you know, I don't see any obvious places okay so uh i guess we could check it out yeah what what i would like to do before we do that right mm -hmm. is gonna i'm gonna walk around the building just in case there's like a hidden room or something like missing in the perimeter inside i'm gonna knock on the doors and whatnot if there's nobody inside oh, sorry knock on the uh, walls and stuff if there's nobody inside yeah your chance is isn't it like a one on d6 or something like that it's a six on d6 or something like that for hidden hidden rooms yeah but that's uh, like automatically without even trying to look for them i guess secret doors. oh but if you're trying then it's better and then if actively searching you have a one and three chance okay so one or two on a d6 so give me that d6 one, two, or three, right? One, <laughs> one or two. What? Sorry, repeat the, the sentence so again. If you actively searching for such doors, elven characters have a one in three chance. Oh, one in three. Okay. No. Nope. You look around, kind of inspecting the walls, running your hand over the uh, unkempt wood, but no secret doors are detected. Okay. Well, seems they're not here. <coughs> uh, we, we walked through the whole place, right, at this point? You walked around it, yeah. Um, oh, I, I meant inside. Like oh, you meant inside. inside. If mm -hmm. we go inside and there's no nobody inside, I'm going to do that to the wall. Oh, inside, I see, yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a... Uh, well, you. how do you try to get in? Do you just try the door? I'm down to if you guys want. I default to what Theo says, but uh, sure, that sounds fine. Ah, uh, remember he had a magical person. Can they can they do anything like that? You you probably know better. I don't I, I don't know. Can do it? They do anything like what? Ah, uh, well, I guess uh, can they magically set a trap on the door, or uh, do you think they would set another type of trap on there? The door might even be locked. I mean, yeah, they can set a trap, but if they're the, if it's their hideout and it's the only entrance or exit, why why would they do it? Okay, so many guards trying to come in. Yeah, but how would they leave or how would they enter it? They disarm it. Maybe there's a special way they know how to disarm it. Not not any spells that I'm aware of. It, spells usually are not very discriminate. Ah, uh, okay. Then uh, I'll. S Dan, I kind of look around. We're over here, and I go to a post. Okay. You are at a post. Um, ah, you you guys got it. Let me know if it opens. I was gonna ask if he could open it, but if he goes down over there, I'll try to open it with my hands. Oh, if it if it's locked, just ask me. I'll 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 see if I can work my fingers. It is in fact locked. Mm, that's a good sign. Boy, dwarf ah. boy, just give it a kick. Oh, if you want, they're gonna know we're here, though. But, if you say so, yeah. I will see if Theo wants to actually do anything about it, but if he's not, I'm gonna kick it. Yeah, give me an open doors check. Alright, what is that again? So, that is uh, next to your strength. Yes. Does it matter and the kind of door? Let me actually look this up because I forget. I think it's just a D twenty, but I gotta it yeah, might D20, be percentage. Twelve no, bent bars is percentage, open bent doors is, is on a D twenty. Okay. Yep. 
Um, is there like bonuses because it's like old and rusty and stuff? Or yeah, let me just quickly take a look at uh, what strength is. So open doors. I think um, lower is better. D twenty equal to or less than the number. So I think that's less than yours. It's open. It's open. You kick the door down. It's shitty rotted wood, so it just crumples immediately. And inside, you see a standard house that would have been... That's just completely overrun with uh, insects and rats. They all scurry away from the light. Mm. There is a... It's basically just one big common room. Oh. I say gross. And I'll say, do you, uh, you guys want to you check it out, Aridane, or no? Yeah, Aridane is going to go inside. He, he rolled a five, so I guess he just runs his hands through the, you know, the floors, the, the, the sides of the walls, and he's like, no, there's nothing here. Nope. Okay. Anything else here, ironic, or is it? Uh, I go me... in there. Oh, good. Uh, give me a perception check, all of you. Yeah, I was actually gonna do a detect noise. Sure, yeah, you can do that. Uh, what is your chance? Forty. All right. The and I see it. Whatever it is, you it is see seen. it. Uh, the only noise you can detect. Uh, you succeeded, but the only noise that you actually get is the rats and insects and whatever is going on outside. Uh, but Rocky, you mm -hmm. can spot uh, just sort of on the side in, the, in a corner covered by some bedding is looks to be a chest. Ooh. I'll go to the chest, open it up. Yeah, you can... There's no need to open it, because as soon as you remove the bedding that's on it, you see that it is open and empty. Oh, yo, curses! Oh, like, they got it from us. Oh, I guess we can head out to the next location. But what's what do you mean they got it from us? Do they steal something of ours? Well... It was supposed to be ours. Those are chests, probably full of money or something, but it's not it's empty. Good thing to know, they do have money. Bad thing to know, it's not here. Sorry, was it empty? Yes. Did you check for the hidden compartments? Uh. I just say no. yes, lie. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, let check it out with the let me chest. check for these hidden compartments. Come on, I know how these things work. Okay. Yeah. I'll go up to it and try and do it. Would there be any sort of thief check, or do you just want me to do a basic check of some sort, or do I not do any check and not find anything? Um, I think there is a rule for that somewhere, and I think it's in some of your thief skills. Um, yeah, because I know I got pickpockets, open locks, maybe find or remove traps, but it's not technically a trap. But those would be the only two I can think of on here. Yeah, so let me take a look. Ah, shit, I know, does anybody remember what Neil would do for this? I forget. Because I know what that happens. For this, usually for this uh, thing, he just rolls perception. Like... Perception? Straight up perception. Okay. Yeah, if you're inspecting like a just a small area, like a single chest for compartments, it's just a perception. But if it's like a massive dungeon, he doesn't really like let you roll perception for it or anything. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Give me a perception check for now. Ooh. Okay. Yo. Hmm. You can uh, inspect this chest, you can lift it up, turn it over, dump the dust out, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's any uh, hidden compartments in this chest. It looks like all you can see inside is what's on the outside. 
this, uh, you could say this chest has been thoroughly ransacked. <laughs> I kicked the chest super hard because I'm frustrated. Jeez, now, what did the chest ever do to you? It took my money. Well, then you just find the next chest that has the rest of the money. It's not... Exactly. It, it's an object. It doesn't have feelings. Why are you kicking it? At least kick something with feeling, because then it'll... I at least have feelings, back. darn it. So I'm like, let's go. Okay. Do we go to the one in the middle? Yep. About what time is it now? Uh, started at 12, so I'm going to say it's... Probably around one at the current time. Cool. So you guys can head on over to this next one. This one's substantially bigger. It's less of a um, it's less of a house and more of a warehouse, uh, but the same kind of deal. It's unkempt. It's boarded up. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. No discerning identifiers on it either. All right. So, I'll say to Theo and Erdane, do your thing. Me and Klaus are going to hang back and look around. And I'll make a perception check, I guess, to see if anybody's, like, staring at this or, like, looks kind of shady like they're watching us. Sure, yeah. Killing it. That's a pretty good roll. But you look around and don't find anybody looking in your direction. I mean, some people, like, are, but they don't look like they don't look like they're the people you're looking for, though. Gotcha. So I feel pretty good, and I go stand around and with Klaus and see if Aradane or Theo want to do anything. I once again ask to you to see if there's any like back doors or any escape routes that could take if we storm from the front entrance. Uh yeah, I can I, I can certainly find it. I can find anything. Yep. Give me that uh, I think it was a perception check we did. Yes. Oh, you also wanted to move silently, I'm assuming? Uh, yes. Alright. Nobody hears the footsteps of Theo as he graciously glides along the path around the building. That's right, I don't think we even needed to do a perception check because it's literally just like a building, but... Yeah, building for the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... The warehouse has no real... It has windows, but uh, all of them are either boarded up or just covered by cloth. That's been nailed into the inside of the, of the building, of the window. Okay. So, uh, there are... There is, like, one big door on... Uh, the north side of it, mm -hmm. but it's more like, I don't know how you would describe it. It's like a garage door or like the me the medieval equivalent of like a warehouse door. Yeah, big old sliding. Door. Yeah, yeah, sliding. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Um, if there's no like small door to enter in, like a smaller. There is, there are, there is a small door on uh, this side of it. All right. I will say, all right, we can go through this door here. I can see well if it gets too dark in there. Might not be, but if it is, um, Theo, Klaus, you guys stick like close to the door and just come in if something comes, pops off. Eridan, you get behind me and shoot if anybody appears hostile. I'll go in first. And I'll see if there's a door open. Uh, you just try the regular door. The regular door yeah, the regular. is locked. Theo, can you pop this open real quick? 
Yeah, give me a give me a shot. I'll, I'll try. Yeah. Give me an open doors check. Or uh, your lock picking check. That's a 40 and I do have a lock picking key. Perfect. You can roll it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only stuff that would affect um like other people. Oof. Yeah, no cigar. That's pretty bad, but it's not a 100, so you don't break your lock picking tools. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, like... On a lock? Or... After that happened, I'm like, oh. I'll try it. No. You rock. Is that a success or no? And it's not a success. Unless the door is old, if you want to give any modifiers for being old or rusty or something like that, yeah, it's a regular door. door. Door is pretty old, but I don't think that affects this very much. So you can like okay. slam into the door, but you just bounce right off. Can I try to kick it in as well, or sure, is that yeah. like a? Anybody can try to do it once. It's open. Actually, no. You can do multiple checks of open oh. doors. It's open. Okay, it's open. Cool. Yeah, the door Please. falls to the ground. And inside, uh, yeah. Sorry, I look at uh, I look at Rocky, and I I kind of flex my muscles a little bit. Good job, uh -huh. for you. Look who's the strong one now, huh? And what do we see? You see a. Um, it is a very. It's just one big room. Fill, well, it's not one big room. It's one area that is a big room with a little office down on the south side of it. But the shelves that line the walls are all have either crates or barrels, uh, but they all look pretty old. And some mm. barrels are just have been destroyed with time. Okay. What's inside of crates? Does anybody have a crowbar or anything they can use to open up crates? Spear? Uh, let me see what I have. Spear? I don't know if you'd want to risk your weapon. Okay. Well, I do have a mace I can bash it open with and a dagger. Mace would work. Dagger would also work, probably. So I'll use my dagger to open up a crate. Sure, yeah. Uh, and how would I do... Is it a roll or is it just... It happened. Um, I'm thinking right now. Roll a d20 and don't roll a 1. Okay. That's pretty close, <laughs> but okay. You're good, you're good. Um, you get a crate open. And inside is just uh, some moth eat... Well, no... Yeah, like bug-eaten clothes. Uh, they don't yeah. look like particularly nice clothes either. Okay, I'll look and I'll walk towards the office and see if there's anything in there. Yeah. Uh, you can go towards the office. You can look around. It's just a desk with uh, nothing really on it. There is like a vial of old ink. All the ink has dried from it. Uh, the quill is nowhere to be seen. And there are some drawers in this desk, and opening them just reveals, like, uh, nothing, really. It's just paper. Old, eaten through paper that's, that's would be barely legible. Okay. And is there an upstairs in it or anything? Uh, there is no upstairs. There, Well, there kind of is, but it's mainly just for uh, warehouse storage. It's like a... It's like little dingy stairs that just kind of lead to the ceiling, essentially. Gotcha. That you can, like, move the stairs. I will and... say... You guys want to do anything here, or should we go on? In all of these three hideouts, I'm gonna do be, be doing the same thing I did in the first one, as in like looking for 
maybe fake floors or you know like a hidden compartments or like doors or whatever that leads maybe to a separate room in the wall of whatever yeah give me a d6 yeah no nope. you you scour the area but it's pretty big so you try to focus on the places you think a secret door would most likely be but find nothing yeah okay off we go anything are you good ah that seems clear right move to the next spot all right you guys can start heading over to the last one. Approaching it, this is in a bit of a nicer area of town. You see that on the outside of it is a blacksmith's station. It's like a uh, it's like a forge on the outside, but there's no fire. It's not lit. Is there, is there a forger in there, like a blacksmith in there? No. It is, there's nobody there. And the outskirts, mm. it looks like a, just a, maybe a bit of a nicer house. But the windows are still boarded up. Okay. Uh, is anybody walking down the streets or anything like that? Yeah, this is a bit of a busier area. So some people are... Uh, walking along. Some people are walking back to work from after having lunch. Is there any, like, shops nearby that would be looking at, like, towards where the house is? Yeah, this area generally is, uh, like a crafter's area. So there are people outside. There's one guy, uh, just next door, this one, to the south. And there's a guy there tanning some leather. So I'm gonna say to the guy, I'm gonna ask this guy something real quick. And I'll go to the tanner and I'll ask him, has anyone come to the house next door today? Today? Mm -hmm. uh, no one's ever been there from what I've seen. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you do hear stuff at night. You know, I think it's uh, squatters, you know? Maybe oh, uh, some kids looking to party or something like that. Gotcha. Is that like every night or like every other night or something like that? Oh, it's pretty sparse, you know. If it was every night, I would have complained by now and gotten them evicted or something. Okay. I'll go back to the party and I'll say, guys, I think this might be the best sh uh, spot we got. We should probably use Theo here to get ourselves inside and if he's in there we can get him and if not we can wait until night because it seems like they come in here at night and if we wait until night we can get to drop on him uh, I agree with what you're uh, proposing but uh, I guess I'll just point out your, your your use of language the only thing the only person I'm being used by is somebody who gives me a lot of money but I will help out because we're partners yeah, same, same. Jolly good. Let's go. All right. All right. Can I walk up to the door unless anybody has anything else they want to do. Is there windows or is there anything happening like inside or like what? What's up? Um. Do, can we tell it from? outside if there's anything happening inside or is like everything boarded up as well like the previous boarded ones up, everything say. is boarded up the windows it's just a general like nicer looking house but it is still boarded up and you said it was like a smithy, smithy area or yeah there's a smithing area off to the south end near where the tanner is working tanner, oh, isn't, so tanner isn't on the property he's just next to it yeah, so the smithing area is not on the property as well, right? Not like... 
the smithing area is like part of the house. So you think of like you have like a house, which is would be like the blacksmith's house, and then like there's a roof over where the forge is. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Let's check. Let's check it out. Yeah. So we go to the door. See if it's locked again. It is. Theo. Yeah, don't worry, I got this time. I uh, mm, I just need a warm up door. Alright. Ooh. That's that a is possibility. one lock pick broken. All right. I'm going to say you have like two or three. That's in a thieving kit. All right. Two. Well, do you want to be two or three? Let's call it three. All right. So I have two. I'll say, oh, no. Can we I'm, I'm going to knock the on the door, actually, and I'm going to be like, sorry, I'm I'm looking to buy a house. Hello? I back away. I'll walk to the back of the house. The back of the house has mm -hmm. a window that is just covered by a piece of uh, cloth, but you can tell that it's been tampered with. One of the corners is just open. The cloth has kind of fallen. And Aridane... As you knock on the door, you hear, a, "Get up! Get up. Who, who's that?" I'm, I'm a practitioner of smith. I'm looking to, to buy your smithy. Okay. And he goes. You hear like a uh, wrestling on the inside. I draw my weapons. He doesn't see me obviously through the door, so no, I draw my weapons. The I'm ready. Yeah. And he will. Uh, you hear, like, a... He starts to unlock it, but it gets stuck. He's like, oh, God, hold on. Uh, Theo, you know that a piece of your lockpick is still within the lock, and that <laughs> is s not allowing him to open the door. Uh, hold on, give, give, give me a second, give me a second. I can... I can... He starts banging on the door. Uh... Well, I'm just going to have to use my, my secret entrance. <laughs> Into and, the dwarf he goes. And, uh, Rocky, are you still at this area where the cloth is? Yes. Okay, so... Would I have heard their conversation? Yes, you would have. And okay. you hear if the I footsteps. It, I... Yeah. Then I'll, uh kind of hurry back to the group. Well, not hurry back to the group. I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go away from the back. Of, is the back of the house, like, is it fenced off? Or is it, like, lead to another street? Uh, nope, it just leads to the back of other houses. So I am going to run back a bit. So it looks like I'm, like, going, I'm not, I'm walking towards a house, something like that. But I'll keep my eye on the door and see what's going on over there. Okay. I want to keep my back towards the person, but like my head looking at him, like I'm looking back. To Your head looking on. toward the uh, the window. You're right, right. Yeah. So you see this raggedy man dressed in fucking basically nothing. It's like a holy moth-eaten shirt that he just found off the street, and he just crawls out of the window and starts making his way around the building. Uh, okay. And then... I'll just uh, I'll mm -hmm. wait till he leaves. Okay. And Aridane, uh coming out from this side of the... Uh, it's like a little alleyway in between the house next to it comes just a scraggy looking man. He has a patchy beard and 
uh, and like hair is falling out. It's so dirty. You can't tell if his hair is browned or just burnt dirty blonde. But he comes over to the side of the building and up to you and says, oh, so, uh, and he sees your weapons drawn. Uh, can I help you with something? Like I said, I'm trying to buy the house. Okay. He's oh. trying to show you his best weapons that he's forged so far. Yeah, and I'm going to show him my, like, elven forged longsword that I forged myself. And I'm like, huh? What do you think? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Thought, to, thought you were trying to, like, rob me or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you got I'm... gold instead? Of course. I'm, I'm going to literally pin him to the wall, and I'm going to be like, where is the other man? Uh, uh, other man is just me. Um, my, my, like, I have a long sword in the hand that I'm pinning with, and my short sword is gonna kind of walk towards his gut, slowly. Uh, I swear it's only me, I just squat here, please, I just, uh, please. See, so we're just gonna take my money. Well, well, yeah, but, come on, man, come on, times are tough these days. Fine, don't, fine. Just, just don't kill me, just don't kill me, please. Fine, fine, fine. Hey, yo, Rocky, can you check the inside? I got it, and I'll hop in the window. Yeah. The, and, uh, and hey, uh, for the troubles, man, here you go. Uh, I, t I have two silvers in my in between my fingers. Here you go. Uh, have a have whatever you want on me. Uh, I just kind of inspect the man like really closely, you know, if if it's the same man that I saw on the on the plank, maybe just with a disguise or something. Uh, give me a perception check. Come on, big numbers. 26? Not bad. Alright. I was hoping you'd fail that one, but... Uh, yeah, this is not the same man. This looks like a... Uh, a tramp. Just... A yeah. homeless person. Yeah, yeah no worries. I, I'm, I'm gonna let him go, and I'm gonna, like, let him dust, dust himself off. <sighs> uh, so, uh... So I, I don't know the owner, but I'm sure he he uh, he comes he comes by here sometimes with his with his buddies. But uh, you know I'm sure that he'll come by uh, maybe at some point. I don't if know when. If he comes, though. if he comes today or tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about this blonde man with long hair, right? Shoulder length. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen him around. If he comes here again tonight, act like nobody came here today. And if you come tell me that he's sleeping here, and he's here when I come, I'll give you a nice bag of gold. Sounds good to me. I... Yeah. If he comes by, I'll let you know. I could I could even help you look for him. No need to look for him. Stay in this house. If he comes and squats here or whatever, just come meet us in the inn, and I'm going to tell him the inn name or whatever. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll stay here and... Wait, shit, but I kind of want to get some moon rocks. No, 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 I'll, I'll stay here, I'll stay here. Perfect. But as I said, here's, uh, two silver here for you, so you can have something well we're a way to know we're good for it. Oh, no, I really want moon rocks, fuck. Oh, I'll stay what here, the... I'll stay here, I'll stay here. What the fuck is a moon rock? So, does anybody have... I know Theo is kind of, like, in the underground a little bit. Uh, does anybody have, like, local history or, like, an alchemy proficiency or anything like that? <laughs> we already established that that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Theo, you would know that Moon Rocks is the different... Four is a different form of, I believe it's called gnome dust. Moon rocks is like crack, whereas gnome dust is cocaine. It's formed by an alchemist, typically, but a lot of regular people take gnome dust and turn it into uh, moon rocks. Okay. Hey, man. Hey, if, if, if you want some of that, don't worry. The amount of money we're going to give you after we find him, 
We'll make it so you can get stuff even better than that, like the real shit. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Eyes see. on the prize. Eyes on the we prize, he, yeah, yeah. We think he might come by, right? Tonight, or tomorrow at least. If he does, if he finds us without him finding out, he's gonna have enough moon dust to, or rocks or whatever. Moon rocks. Yeah. Oh, he'll get yeah. even better if he gets that he won't even have to pay for those, he can pay for gnome dust. You'll be set for good, huh? For a oh. while at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. I'm in the house this whole time, I'm guessing. Yes. And I'm looking around. Do I see anything suspicious? or? You see like... the signs of a person who has essentially ransacked this entire place probably about three times over. And you just see a little like bed in the corner with... Uh, surrounding the bed is just bottles of expensive liquor uh, and wines and stuff like that. And there is a carpet that's been overturned and rolled back uh, kind of sloppily. And underneath that is a trapdoor containing nothing. But next to it is a crate that looks to be filled with uh, expensive alcohol. <laughs> upstairs here? Sorry? And upstairs? Or any other rooms? Nope, no upstairs. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's same as the first one, it's just bigger. It's one big common room. Alright. So I will head out to the door, or the window, and meet back up with the guys. And look at this man again. Like, and then look to the guy and be like, He stares at you bug eyed. Mm hmm. Didn't see him. We can probably get him if we wait around or something. Who's this? He's. He's a friend, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm Yeah, friend. he's our new buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a friend. Yeah. Exactly. Don't worry. He's a friend. Um. Hmm. All right. Let's go. Let's go get a drink at the end. Let's get some moon rocks while we wait. Yeah. We'll walk away. But as we're walking away and we get out of sight of this individual, I'm going to talk to the guys and say, uh, uh, you guys can go to the end. I'm going to stick around here and... See if he comes by. I don't trust him. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you want to be alone, I mean, we could all try to stake out the place. Sure. So, I'll... Is there a store nearby that sells cloaks or anything like that? Oh, you can get a cloak from pretty much any clothing shop. So, I will go and buy a cloak for myself and cover up myself and my weapons. Alright, sure. Any particular color you're looking for? Uh... Probably... What is Theo's? Theo. What, uh, color is my cloak? Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is probably like, uh... How do I describe it? Like, a Darkish green-brown... Like, probably because it's it's not super filthy, but it's, yeah, from that darkish green to brown. I will get a gray cloak then. Maybe look kind of like we're closely related, but probably not. Probably just some under guy with another gray cloak. Um, yeah. yeah, the uh, clothier will sell you a cloak, a nice dwarf-sized gray cloak. For mm -hmm. one, uh, for a gold and five copper. Gold and five. All right. One gold, five copper. And also, guys, just remember, uh, if you get offered any of this, uh, moon rocks, uh, 
don't take it, alright? It's, uh, it'll mess with your head. That sounds something like we elves would appreciate. Moon rocks, close to uh, nature, you know, everything. Uh, it's, it's definitely gonna bring you closer to nature, I'll tell you that. It's gonna Perfect. maybe make you even, uh, let's see, six feet under. I'll make you even that close, you'll be close to the worms. Oh, damn. Yeah, if you use it too much, it's probably what's going to happen, yeah. Cool. So, so no moon this. rocks? No moon rocks. Okay. What about moon dust? No. Uh, gnome dust, it's, uh... Mm, it, it's essentially the same thing, except more pure, and you can uh, get a better feeling from it, but uh, it's a lot easier to put yourself 12 feet under. Yikes. Yes. It's only for the, the really upper class people who also just like pretending that they're not really living in reality. That sounds like something we elves would use. And you probably do. That's probably why uh, some elves act so... Uh, what's the word? You probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. No, no. Tell me. You know, when they, uh, act so, oh, I love the trees, I'm gonna go hug one, ooh, and they start kissing the trees, and... I don't know, stuff. sounds like a halfling to me. Excuse me, what was that? <laughs> I kind of look towards uh, Rocky, and I'm like, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Rude. I have never hugged a tree. I might have accidentally peed on a bush, but that's the closest I've been. Accidentally? Yes, I was aiming for, uh, the other bush. You know, you and me camped in a forest, right, for like a week. I saw you what you do to bushes and trees. Hey, as I said, they're just objects, alright? It's not like they have feelings. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Makes sense. All right. So I will say let's probably set up at different locations so we're not looking conspicuous and whatnot together. Uh, I'll head. Let's see. Wait, didn't you say there was like a trap door in the house? Yeah, the trap door doesn't do anything, though. It's mm, I can hide in there. You could, but that'd be well, you know what? That wouldn't be bad. And then I'll just keep an eye from one side of the street or in the back alleyway where the other houses are. Like like a homeless man who's just sitting down in the back over there. One of you has to watch the door. The other one needs to watch the open window. Yeah, exactly. So I'll sit in And if it makes it past either of you, I'll hear him. But uh, how do I let you guys know? That's the problem. I think we should stay together. Just just wait it out. If he doesn't show up, he doesn't show up. Not much we can well, do. Well, we can always wait in the house. I'll hide in there, and then you two hide in uh, different parts of uh, corners of the house. How about we paid the leather worker to stay in his in his house? I can sleep. Maybe hopefully r r learn some spells while while we wait, and we can ah. just safely look from the inside of the house through the window That's if anybody. That's fine, comes I guess. That's okay. I guess we can do that. I don't want you to, uh, you know, exhaust yourself. Yeah. So, sure. do we just explain the situation to the letter worker and, like, ask to use his house for the night? Sure. Pay him maybe a little bit? Sure. Well, just tell him what's going on that we were given sanctioned by the city to take out Rancid Ralph or whatever his name was, and we're going to do this thing, and we don't have to pay him because it's ordained by the city. I, I offered to pay him. Oh, sure. All right, so you can approach the leather worker. He is still at work tanning some hides. Yeah? Sorry, what's your name, sir? My name is Lezim. Lezim, do you know of a man called the Wretched... What's his name again? Rancent the Ravisher. Rancent the Ravisher? Uh, yeah, I've heard about him. 
ever spoke to him? No, can't say I have. What, uh, what's, what's this about? Wasn't he killed today? No, he escaped. Oh, shit. And we believe his hideout might be the house across from you. Oh! This... That is news to me. Anyway, um, he's expected to come back later tonight. What do you say we stay in your house and we keep an eye on it? If he shows up, we just kill him on the spot. Oh yeah, yeah we're sanctioned by the city guard, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I'd say a little bit of protection tonight would be good. Oh my god, what the fuck? He's been here all this time. Uh, fuck yeah, no, please stay. I'll, I'll have my wife cook dinner and... You can you can stay here, yeah. This guy sounds too eager. Do I catch like any like bullshit going on? <laughs> Roll me a charisma check. You can tell he is just scared that the fact he's been literally he thinks he's been living next to a murderer that's like for a, a long time. And he just wants some added protection tonight, so he doesn't, like, get killed or anything. Perfect, perfect. Let's stay in his house, and I'm gonna talk to him, like, all the time about letter working if he's very eager to, to talk to me about it. Oh, I'm, uh... I forgot he's a leather worker. I am, too. Ah, kindred oh, spirit. Oh, me, too! Oh, man. Oh, you can, too? Oh. Oh, man, when you... When you... Oh man, there's nothing just like shop. there's nothing like the feeling of getting a nice pile of cow shit and just rubbing it all over some dead animal skin. It's uh, just oh my favorite the part best. is treating the skin with piss, it, with cow it's, piss. It's oh the yeah, best. It's so good. You know, sometimes we just actually use my own piss. You know, mine, my mine, my family's, and we just empty out the the pots on them. Oh, for me that's horrible, you know, because how do you feel, you know, you, you're gonna give this armor to a friend, and your friend is wearing something that's covered in your own piss? That that doesn't well, really work we for me. wash it. I mean, there's still, like, you know, we wash it. It's not like there's piss in it or on it or anything. You use your own piss? Well, it, cow well, piss is expensive. Like this, Everybody right? wants it. It is. It really is. Jesus uh, you come from a different, different land of me, my friend. <laughs> We, where I come from, you don't really make your leather with uh, your own urine. Well, you know, you gotta, you know, different urines for different effects, you know? Like, you use human urine for, like, common stuff and, you know, like, uh... For, like, leather straps and whatnot. For armor, you're probably gonna use, like, cow piss, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't want to use, you don't want to use, uh, human urine on something like armor, no. Exactly. Hey, for the people I made it for, you know... They were a little of the upper crust. You had to do... Me and my parents actually... Well, I don't know if we created it, but we coined it. We had a special way that we would encrust different uh, metals and maybe some smaller stones on stuff. We called it bedazzling. Shit, sounds fancy. Oh, it is. Uh, you basically... You make shapes and designs with little parts of... Uh, rubies and sapphires and stones wow you know i don't got any of those on hand but maybe if i save up enough money i'll be able to give that a shot myself yes and then you can upsell it because it has a certain design and then also the cost of the stones in it as long as you're good at making the designs true yeah excellent don't think I'll be getting a ruby anytime soon, but maybe like a jade or something like that. I could try to do something. That's good enough. You want to make your armor stand out. You want your bags or whatever you make to stand out from others so people know it came from you. And also other people can think they're better than others. That's why people use these things. Yeah. From, from... I'm, I'm not Sorry. a common leather worker. I'm... I'm a human being, and and he goes off on a tangent. From talking to Tio and this leather worker, right? Who is who? Which one of them is more proficient? Do both of them have like two proficiencies in leather working, or do I feel like one of them has only one? Or Theo is more proficient than this 
common leather worker. This guy just work. Just this guy just makes like common leather items for like people, really, for like common people. Theo has like gone into the like. He's mastered that, but also, like, armor craft and other things like that. And the bedazzling. <laughs> bedazzling. Yeah, I have. Nice. What's your intelligence, Theo? Uh, 14. Okay, nice. You're a pretty decent leather worker. Nice. Yes, I am. It sounds like you are as well, though. Indeed I am. Well, maybe one day we'll have to have a leather off, but uh, we <laughs> won't be so peeing on it, okay? Off. Who can make the <laughs> yeah, best we'll assless our... chaps? We'll make we'll make our best pieces of leather for each other, and we have to look at each other wearing them, see which one looks better on the person. Yeah, a leather leather strap, yeah. A loin That's cloth. why I call it a leather off, or a leather on, whatever you prefer. Yeah, fair enough. I prefer off, but... <laughs> I bet you would, slugger. <laughs> <laughs> and I look for validation from Rocky. I just look at them like this has been a disgusting conversation. These guys are freaking weird. <laughs> uh, you won't understand. It's about the leather. I don't want to touch poop and piss all day. So no. Well, we wear leather yeah. gloves. Oh, okay. That's fine. And I will go <laughs> back to looking out the window because this is disgusting. <laughs> with Klaus. <laughs> Alright, yeah, Klaus is not part of this conversation either. Um, yeah, so you guys, how, you guys want to wait, like, all night, pretty much? I say yeah, throughout the night. Okay. There is uh, no reason not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually, um, fuck, what was his name? It was Lesm. Lesm's wife comes home. And so does their children. Uh, they mainly keep to themselves throughout the night. Lesm explains to his wife what's going on. Um, she's kind of shocked by the fact that a hideout of Ransons was right next to them this entire time. But Think about the kids! <laughs> yeah. And you guys are brought dinner. It's a pretty nice home-cooked meal. It's like a... It's not anything special, though, because they weren't expecting company, so there's no meat. I'm, I'm gonna kind of bring this up to to Teal while we're kind of chilling here for the night. I'm gonna point towards the smithy, and I'm gonna say, what, what do you think about buying that one? It's... It works for a uh, small place. It's kind of small, though. Especially if we want to build up. There's not a lot of room for growth. But it does have at least a good place where we could make stuff. But I'm we need other people with more experts in armor craft. I am an expert in leatherworking, expert in weapon crafting, and an expert in armor welding. Mm. Well, uh... Hmm... It would probably work. Maybe it would be a good place where we could make some extra money to then have our main hall, but it could be a good side place as well. I mean, as the guild stands now, there's only the four of us, right? It could be a nice Best. place to just relax after journeys. Most of the time we're on the road anyways, or at least I'm presuming we're going to be. If we have to, we can always upgrade. And while we're resting, we can always... Upgrade the armors and weapons, and eventually probably get a bigger building. But it would be a nice start. We wouldn't have to buy like a, you know, if we ever want to make weapons or armors, we wouldn't have to buy a specialty place ah, for it. We won't even have to buy it. Exactly. We could. That could be our reward. Yes. Just a suggestion. Just, just a suggestion. Mm, I I like your ideas. They're very oh. interesting. But you know, it's one of my passions. I've always wanted to make an amazing weapon. Or maybe a magical one one day. I always have an amazing weapon on hand. Yeah, I'm talking about actual weapons, not, not that little thing you have. Hey, don't call my sling bullets small, alright? They're effective. Right. Right. Uh, right. I don't know what you're getting at, but... 
my stuff's useful too. Uh. <laughs> Just a suggestion. What's the leather worker's name? He's gonna be my mm -hmm. new friend. Leather worker's name is Lesm. L e s, L e s y m. Lesm. So we wait. But are you sleeping, Erdane, or are you like still just chilling? Preferably in the night. I'm gonna sleep. So hopefully, if they don't show up in the morning, I'm gonna have a spell ready. Yeah. <laughs> So if, if you guys allow me, I will absolutely sleep. Yeah, I'll let you sleep. You can sleep and, uh... I mean, you could probably take the watch while we're still there in the daytime, and then as it hits closer to, like, sometime you can start going to sleep. You can yep. start sleeping, like, 6, 7 o'clock, and hopefully you get enough sleep and they show up or not. Yeah. But we'll see. I'm going to say you need 8 hours of sleep, even if you're an elf, to be able to memorize spells. Yeah. Sure. So you can start uh, getting rest at 6 p.m. Yep. And, and if they actually... show up by 4 or whatever, I should have enough sleep to, to start preparing spells. Which would take me only 10 minutes, because it's only one level, one, one spell. Yeah. And with the time, should we cut it here? Should we go until we go through that part in the house? Uh, do you guys want to cut it here? Does anybody have to leave soon? I'm good to go. Keep going. I will check really quickly. Okay. Now that you need me, they kind of want to go longer, but you need me. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm needed, so I can't. I have to cut it here. No, it's fine. Or if anything, we can keep it going, and I'll be on silent for a while. <laughs> no, actually, no, I gotta get off. Yeah, right. we yeah, can cut it here so let me just we can do xp really quickly okay sure. uh, so you guys got that quest experience already yes. it's a big one. and i have other xp written over here so you guys just got the thief and the wizard so in total would you say the other guy counts too because he got a, he ran away from he combat? got away so he doesn't count Darn it. actually well I'm going to say you did kind of defeat him in combat, so I'll throw him in as well. So, in total, it's 200, and that's divided by all of you. So, 50, 50. each, essentially. Yep. 50 each. Nothing. So, 55 <laughs> for <laughs> me. I'm just going to change Klaus's experience to 800. There we go. That's alright, I'm getting close to the one, next level. One, three, seven. Halfway there. Hopefully if you finish this mission, we get it. Yeah, I'm only 700 away from level 3. Um, how many hit dice we get for a fighter? Uh, you get... Ten? Uh, yeah, 10 experience for hit dice. So, 30. Uh, 40. 40. Okay. Yes. And your sleep spell... That counts as well. You get 50 for that. Thank you, thank you. And then... Wait, we get 40 XP for uh, enemies? 40 XP for, for hit dice, yeah. 40 XP per hit dice. How many hit dice were they? So, oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. So, plus so, 40. Yep, there you go. And then is... I think that's everybody's individual experience except for Theo... Uh, I don't think I get anything else. I didn't do anything spectacular with uh, any of my skills, I don't think, or anything. Okay, well, you'll still get uh, XP for gold obtained. Uh, yeah, we got 100. Yes. Um, I think that's plus... it. Yep, yeah, it's 100. Yeah. yeah. So take 200 XP. Oh, was it gold obtained? That's cool. I thought it was gold stolen or something. Ooh, I'm only 500 away, guys. Level 3. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
And I'm saving up our gold. We got a good amount. We got 137 gold. Cool. I would absolutely love to get some new spells. Level 1 spells. That would be absolutely awesome for us. Like an armor spell I could cast on you. For you not to wear like any armors. To get some benefits in mm -hmm. like a rogue, rogue skills and stuff. Would be awesome. Yeah. That's fine with me. All I know is I'm collecting all that money so that we can save up if we need to for this house. But if we get a house like this for free, then, you know, we can spend it on whatever we want. But I've got it all here for you guys. Yeah, that'd the be awesome if we got this, uh, got this house. But let's see how it goes. That sounds good. Yeah, so I think that's all the XP. Um... Anybody have any closing remarks or anything like that? Oh, it's a fun session. Uh, hopefully get to play with Klaus soon. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. Yeah. Other than that, uh, fun session, good times. Uh, you know. Yeah, what's fun? Up. My wife says sorry because we have to cut it short for the baby. Oh, but... don't worry. Real life stuff always comes comes before D&D. &D. Yeah, yeah. They said it's fine. Don't worry about it. And, um, yeah, just uh, next time, see you guys in, what, two weeks? Yep, two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, see you later, man. Later, guys. See you guys. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, stream.